uh, who, who are in a meeting right now that should be ending any second. So just to let you know. They're looking for the How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Sorry about that. We had a forecasting meeting that ran a little over. It's all right. We just doctored your pay. <laughs> okay. It being about 6.49, I'll call meeting order. Can I have a uh, acceptance of the agenda? So moved. <coughs> Danny, second by second. Mr. Harris, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Um, we have a walk-in period now. Are there any walk-ins here? Mr. Ball? Dave, if you can just give your name and address and stuff. David Ball, 44, Rebecca Road, President of the Chicken Historical Society. Um, I just want to give the board an update on the work out of the White House. Um, as you recall, last spring, the board um, signed the contract for the renovation work that was going to take place out there. That was an $85,000 project. $75,000 came from CPC town money, and $10,000 came as a donation from the uh, Historical Society. We started the work in July on the storage room, and that was totally rebuilt uh, prior to the first opening uh, for the summer tours. Uh, and then we purposely waited until <coughs> late August to begin the, the bigger part of the work, which was the rebuilding and the restoration of the utility room. And the utility room is where all the mechanical systems for the lighthouse are located. Um, the heating system, the electrical system, plumbing, and that kind of thing. And that work was completed in October. Um, as we suspected, in the utility room, the sills were rotted, the electrical wiring was, was very poor to the point of being scary. Um, the roof was leaking. Uh, we took the uh, building interior-wise down to the studs, uh, rebuilt the floor system because that was unsafe, and then started the rebuilding work. We were able to save the, the original floor in that part of the building. Um, I'm glad to say there was excellent workmanship in all, all parts of all uh, contractors that were involved in the project. Um, and the reason I wanted to come in tonight is to, is to just let you know, number one, it's done, and it, it is such a high profile site. Um, a lot of people were very interested in the whole process of what was going on up there. Um, and the other good news is that the whole project came in somewhere around $9,000 on the budget. And that was in good part uh, due to the efforts of Sean Harris, who was sitting right up there. And um, the society had been working with Sean for about a year on the design and the planning of the, of the heating system. And Sean told us that he was going to do everything he could to um, get the boiler and the burner and the indirect hot water heater and the new oil tank donated, which he did. He also donated all of, all of his workers' labor to the project, so there was no cost there either. So the only cost for the heating system was, um, was for plumbing supplies, piping, that kind of thing. So that was a, that was a huge help. So I want to make sure that you know everyone is aware of that as well. Great. Thank you, Sean. 
You sounds over. like you would have been over budget. That sounds like a lot of. Well, it would have come in right around right around budget, right. but um, it, it was a, certainly a big help. Right. Now that money goes back to the CPC. Is that yeah? That whatever's left over will go back to CPC. Great. Great. And it is all done and completed at this point in time. Yeah. And oh, we, have, we have just one more thing, and that's an exterior light to install, but that's a special order, so Great. hopefully by Christmas. Any comments? No, no, great job. Question, um, the helicopter. Do you know when that's coming, Dave? I do. Is that uh, coming? Uh, it's going to be sometime in the next couple of weeks. I'm, I'm not sure the exact date. Exactly. Okay. I'll, I'll mention it at the next meeting. I'm just curious. Thanks. Want to elaborate a little bit? For sure. A helicopter. Santa comes by helicopter, actually, to the uh, lighthouse keepers. goes up and down the coast, of which it comes to uh, uh, Situate Light. And usually it's the... Saturday or Sunday, and that's why I was asking Dave. Right. Dave might have more information being on Cedar Point. Kind of wait till the last, <coughs> the last no, definitely the time because it's, it's been going on for over like 50 years. Yeah. So, yeah. Does he land and get out? Yep. Yes. Out of the helicopter, right there at uh, the the lighthouse. It's all part of the Flying Santa program that's been going on since 1929. It's really a cool. Actually, it's oh, longer. 80 years. Yeah. Any other comments? Nope. Great, Dave. Thank you very much. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harris. Well, yes. You're welcome. Yes. Thank welcome. you very much, Sean. That's no problem. Very generous. Um, okay, move on to the Hawker's Peddler's License. Is there someone here from uh, Ellen Deluca? Good evening. You can just say your name and your address. We can. Sure. Ellen Deluca to Richfield Road Extension. Okay. So you're here to get your Hawker's Pedal License, the, the usage of it expanded a little bit in terms of what you're selling? Right, and the renewal. And the renewal. Now the renewals will all happen at the same time for everybody. Right. So is this, this is essentially just for the rest of this year? Well, I, you're not, you're not uh, ending no. at this time, No, right? because it's, it's through till tomorrow. Right, so <laughs> okay. she's done with vending. So technically, um, you are, yes, you are correct. Uh, but uh, I would suggest uh, if the board so chooses to amend this license, and then um, it will be considered a, actually, well, it's going to be considered an amended license, and it will just go forward into the, into the next year. We don't have to. Uh, I. And Sean. Yeah, I, I just looked at it like maybe she's expanding her menu a little bit. It makes sense to me. We're hearing about it now. Um, she's been doing it all summer. There hasn't been any problems. So if we, it'd be one less. And she might be changing a little bit, but there won't be any surprises in the spring when she starts up again. I think she's just expanding her, her menu a little bit, you know, and maybe, maybe her hours. But, you know, I, I think it's nice to hear it a little ahead of time. Yeah. Joe? Yeah, I... Uh, yeah, you know, I, I hate to be negative on it, something like this, but you know, I'm saying you, where you're expanding your, your license to sell grilled sandwiches, lobster salad rolls, uh, etc., and you have a, a uh, various locations as far as where you go with the with the business, you could go anywhere in town with various loca locations. Um, well, basically, it's the whole parkway. Yeah, but I, here's where I'm getting with this. We're getting closer and closer every time we. we and I even see with the farmers market. I see with these <clears throat> people in town paying taxes. You know, and again, this is not. Don't take this personal. At all. You just have to be the one in front of us tonight uh, to sell sandwiches, to sell grilled sandwiches, to sell. And we, are we opening up kind of a Pandora's box? Are we opening up a situation where we'll have another Hummer Rock as we had last year or the year before with, with someone being accused of, of, of parking outside, right outside the front door? I'm not saying by any means that you would, but uh, I can see something like just developing into that. You know, when you get into the sandwiches and grilled sandwiches, and a lot of places in town sell grilled sandwiches. I have, don't have a solution for it. I'm just bringing up the the the, the, the problem that I see. Uh, just one quick comment, then, then Mr. Yeah. Murray. Um, that's kind of what we talked about all last year, and yeah. I know that Kim's been working a lot on it, and so is Trish in terms of getting 
the layout in terms of what we want. And that was my comment that I wrote here. This license is very broad because, like Joe said, it says you can go anywhere. I mean, you may only go to Cole Parkway, but it says that you can go to the athletic fields, town activities, Cole Parkway. Um, so that was my question in terms of passing this one right away before we really look at <coughs> the work that you've done to say how many people do we have in Cole Parkway. Um, but. I'll, I'll, before I chat, Mr. Murray. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, Ellen, I just want to echo Sean's point about we didn't hear any complaints <coughs> or anything at all about what you did last year. And so this is not, as Mr. Norton said, you happen to be sitting here. Um, I share Joe's concerns, and Tony is the ones you just said as well, which is why I thought, and you sort of alluded to this already, that we were going to be doing all the licenses at sort of one time as opposed to on a rolling basis so we'd have a, a better feeling for the whole spread of opportunities and the whole spread of things coming in. I thought that was what we were going to try to do for next year. So my sense for me is it's hard for me to vote on this tonight given the fact that we don't have our understanding yet of locations that you folks are going to be working on and also you know, other people might be coming in as well, and we need to see everything's being cons considered. And <coughs> returning vendors, at least for me, um, you know, who have been doing well, you know, have a priority, if you will, or, or whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying um, in that regard. But it's hard for me to deal with this right now, given given where we are in the calendar of this as one issue. And then the second issue would be the the breadth, as you just articulated. Jane. Well, Mr. Luca, um, <clears throat> I certainly could vote on it tonight. However, I think we've seen over the course of the year, and let me tell you a second thing. Uh, you know, if it doesn't happen tonight, you'll have a, in my estimation, you'll have a, in my opinion, a uh, Hawker Petrol's license. Do a good job this year. That shouldn't be a problem. But I think the sense of it right now is if, <clears throat> if um, we're going to have a meeting about where people are going to be located, then we need to do that. I think we're trying to get a sense because there were a lot of people in the past year who said, hey, I want to do this, and then we ended up having some people who wanted to compete against others, and then we had store shop or, or, or you know stores or restaurants or small um, shops that were saying, "Hey, I want to sell this." So we kind of have a, you know, be careful about it. One thing when the lobster salad rolls, I was going to say, did the board of health make sure of that because that's kind of an issue I know Jennifer has to look at. But that being that being said, I mean, I, I just don't want you to walk away tonight and say, "Oh, gee, so no, no, plan on doing it." Um, the people who've done it this past year, I think, should have the op first option to do it the coming year. Um, we're going to have to find locations, though, <clears throat> personally. And I think if that doesn't happen, I'm not going to – you're the first one, so I can tell you this, and I'll give you my assurance, that I don't think this board should vote on anything until we have an idea in place. So you'll be the first one. If, if somebody comes in and says, I want another Hawker Pedalers license at your location or this or that, um, my opinion is that's not going to happen until we get a sense of it so that you're not going to be out – since you're the first one, you know, so to speak, to be before us. But um, so I would probably say hold on, wait until we have a meeting. If we're going to have one, we're going to go into the budgets, which gets us pretty busy. But between now and, let's say, March, we need to kind of get a sense of what we're going to do. And I know there was supposed to be a plan in place that we're going to be looking at. If not, then I think we should have everybody in. <laughs> You'd be the very first one. And I'd say, where is it that you want to go? Because you're the first one to come before us. So. That would be my position. Yeah. Um, as far as the grilled sandwiches, the main reason why I was, I was bringing that up is because I've had a lot of vegetarians approach my cart during mm. the course of the summer. Couples. The girlfriend is a vegetarian. She doesn't do hot dogs. She doesn't do sausages. Um, you know, so I was just thinking just to be able to, to keep that sale, <laughs> right. you know. I mean, instead she walks away with a bag of potato chips or a pickle. Right. I mean, you know, she's not really happy about it, and the, the boyfriend gets to eat. Um, the lobster salad roll, basically because of the lobstermen that are all down at the back, back top there. They're like, why aren't you selling lobster salad? You know, um, it's kind of like one of those things. We uh, get a lot of the people from the marina that question on me. Um, I'm like, because I, I can't do it. It's not part of my license. Well, why don't you make sure that it's on your license for next year? I said, I'll do my best. Um, Thanks. One second. <coughs> Mr. Harris, did you? Let Rick go first. Rick. All right. <clears throat> go ahead, Sean. This is exactly what we want to see in town. They've been taxpayers for how, long, how old are you, Kevin? 60? You know, so they're from town. He's been a local fisherman. 
Ellen's proved herself. <clears throat> I don't know what else I can say. I've seen her out there last summer. If there is some overlap and the restaurants do a better job than Ellen, then Ellen won't be there the next year. Um, I, I can see what you're saying a little bit. Maybe you might want to limit it or know where she is so you don't have a real lot of overlapping if she went to the fields and so forth. But this is exactly the type of operation you want to see, you know? I, you know, I, <clears throat> a model of it. So I, I can't I vote for it tonight and, you know. I had a, actually a lot of people over the, the past two months come up to me and ask me, are you coming back next year? You know, and they, they were really sincere, um, you know, in the fact that they wanted to see me back. They're like, did you have a good enough season to, come to back. make it worthwhile? And I'm like, well, I'm still proving myself, you know? It's the word's still getting out, and September and October were much better than the early part of the summer. Um, I had a lot of comments saying that <clears throat> if anybody deserves it, you should, because you've been here through just about every type of weather we've had. You know, 40 mile an hour winds and everything's blowing off the cart and everything else and chasing it around the parking lot. Well, there's no so, doubt we haven't had any, any complaints about it. So. Right, you know. Uh, it's more location-wise, but uh, Rick, did you have? Yeah, I just want to follow up. I mean, Sean, I agree with you, and I was a customer several times down there, and, you know, the food product was, was great and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, what we were talking about earlier about putting these all roughly the same time, I do want to make sure, though, that we do these early enough in our calendar so the potential vendors can capitalize you know, accordingly, so they can plan accordingly. We don't want to be making our decisions in, I'm not sure when in calendar we'd be able to, have to, but in May or June or, or even even April because that's too late for people to plan. Right. So if we if we could do this in you know January, late January, February, I know budget season, all that sort of stuff, but sooner rather than later to help out the vendors. And again, Sean, I, I completely agree with you about this particular one, but I'm looking more at the overall process mm -hmm. side of things. Joe? Just just a comment that I want to make this very clear. This is not about you. It's not about no, right. our operation at all, in my mind. No. It's, it's, it's strictly about the policy. We ran into problems two years ago where we voted on a very similar situation uh, over in Hamarok, and we came yep. back later on, six months later, to, mm -hmm. to rue the day that we voted it so early. And, and, and we, in the location, we just didn't give it, honestly, enough thought at the time. <coughs> we thought it was routine. And it turns out to be routine. Uh, you, you know, you could add, someone could come in next week and add pizza to it and then sell pizza where we have two or three pizza places right down to the harbor. And that's what we try to avoid, even though, it, as I say, this has nothing to do with your operation, mm -hmm. in my mind. So that's all I want to say, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, the, the only thing I would add is this, this isn't new. You just happened to come in tonight. Kim's been working on this for months and Trisha has too so at some point we're going to have a, a master plan for the town that says there's going to be two vendors at Cole Parkway one at Greenbush one at Sand Hills one one wherever whatever we think the best layout is and then your your scope of where you can go may be declined but not the fact that you vend so if you're at Cole Parkway you may be one of the vendors at Cole Parkway but you may not have the opportunity to go to um, wherever Central you know, central fields or something like that. I think that's what my yeah. impression of the layout is. We've had so many applications come in in the last year, and there's just, you know, we're, we don't even have a good grasp if we're at capacity or not at capacity, and that's what we're trying to get our arms around before we start saying, yeah, you can go there and you can go there because you may have someone parked right next to you selling the same things as you are. So that's why we have to get the licenses down in terms of. And I believe that you've been inundated because there wasn't a week that went by all season that. I wasn't getting questioned. Right. What do you have to do? How do you go about it? Right. And, um, uh, and so that's that's what we have to do and, and make a policy for. It. So, uh, Rick, just a final point. The, the flip side of the coin on this is also that once we establish numbers of vendors and where and locations, and if you're selected as one, that also ends up protecting you because then you know we've already decided what vendors are going to be there. You'll have the reassurance then that. A month from now, we're not going to reopen it up again and, and flood your your area with you know five more vendors. So th th it'll it'll help planning from the town side and also from the vendor side. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And then, well, if if you haven't decided on what the scope of 
saw how competitive those licenses would be <coughs> by like let's say March, um, which I don't really know. Kim and I discussed this like on the St. Patrick's Day parade. If I was to approach Ed Kelly <coughs> in regards to being a vendor, because he had asked me last year, but I hadn't had all my clearance with the Board of Health, um, I couldn't do it. But if I don't have I mean, would that fall under the state hawker peddler, which I hold? I mean, how do I go about that? And I've also been approached for a, a thing that's going on at the community center for March. So, I mean, how do I, how do I handle that? I think that special events are going to be different than just regular order of operation. Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, Heritage Days is a prime example um, where many more vendors come to town than, than we give license to. Do you have a state? Did you say? I did. Right. So that supersedes. Mm -hmm. This uh, typically for mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day parade. That's another good we example. Don't, we don't do any one day on the peddler license for that. The people have to be licensed under the state, and they sell for that one day. So no. That yes, you would come under that. That would be fine. No, that you wouldn't have to. To give you permission. If you're right. Right. License, you can show up. Nobody can keep you from peddling. That's right. <clears throat> and what about the community center? That's entirely different. Okay. Yeah. Entirely different. Entirely different than that I would. You'll I need your hawker peddler's license in order to do that. For the town. For the town, correct. No, what I'm saying is she could have a hawker peddler's license, but if there's an event at the community center, there's an event at the community center. And that would be like a private. Yeah. It has to go through the special events application. So let me ask you this. If she's outside of the building, though, she has a hawker pedals license, she would be able to hawk. But if she's inside, then you'd have to have something special? No? On Peggy's private property. Right. Yeah. Okay. But if we re... Tony? Yeah. If we renew as it exists now, she, you know, we're going to... I think Rick or something, we're going to discuss this in January. <laughs> By March, she should be all set if that's oh, her yeah. concern. I would hope so. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think we change topics from regular operations to, to special, special events. events. Mm -hmm. So if you, <coughs> let's say you get one of the licenses on Cole Parkway, mm -hmm. and then there's an event at the community center, then you would come before looking for a special one-day event to go to the community center, and that would be assessed on those merits. All right, because the, the gentleman that had approached me, he said that he already has the clearance for the food and everything. So, I mean, do I talk I mean, to who? I don't know the circumstances. Yeah. Talk to that person and find out. That's what I would suggest you. Who is the person at the location? So that doesn't open it up to any hawker and peddler that wants to show up. Right. That's a <coughs> determined condition. Good. So I think you should leave this feeling confident that you're going to have a, uh, a a vendor license somewhere, um, and that we're we haven't quite sorted out what the matrix is going to look like. Positive. Okay. Good enough. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's 7:15, and we have um, scheduled a, a public hearing for an alleged liquor license violation, which we have to uh, go to right now. Is there any? Do I? I have to read the. So we're going to skip item four and five to get okay. to we'll this item back. six we'll come agenda back to that item. After this. Okay. If they're here, I think they're out in the hall. Al, do you want to? second. Okay, so we're, we are um, holding um, the public hearing now for, for like I said, the alleged uh, liquor license violation. And um, we have some witnesses here. 
Uh, do I swear them individually as, as they speak or all at once now? We should do all at once. Okay, so why don't we do it? Who is, who is going to be speaking tonight? I know Detective Stewart's going to be. Yes. Anyone else from the police? No. Okay. And if anyone else does, we can swear them in into it later. And the two of you? Uh, yes, from Department of Maintenance. Great. Can you just say your names and addresses real quick? Uh, Brian Gilmet, the owner of the uh, yeah. Tedeschi State. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So um, if you can uh, stand to be sworn in, please. Do you swear, do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you will give at this hearing is the complete truth? Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. <coughs> Great. So why don't we start with uh, Detective Stewart? Yeah, I'm going to give a synopsis of uh, the compliance check that took place that night. On Saturday, August 6, uh, 2011, Detective Bob Rappold and Special Officer Brendan McCauley performed alcohol compliance checks of drinking and sell selling establishments in the town of Sedgwick. <coughs> the cooperative was a 20-year-old uh, white male the operation was run such that uh, at strictly selling establishments, the cooperator entered the store. He would retrieve a six pack of beer and approach the cashier. The cooperator was not allowed to present any identification if he was asked, uh, nor was he allowed to verbally convince the cashier that his age was 21. If asked for identification, he was told to politely say he did not have one and leave the store. At approximately 8.05 p.m., the cooperator entered Tedeschi's Food Mart, Food Mart at 337 Gannett Road and purchased a six-pack of beer without being asked for identification. Uh, once the cooperator was outside of the establishment, the alcohol was secured as evidence, and Officer McCauley re-entered the store, identified the cashier, and explained to the cashier that he had just sold to a minor. In this case, the cashier acknowledged that he did not card the subject. documents that he sent in, as well as, you know, your establishment wasn't the only one that was done that night. There were about 20 or so that were done. Um, and again, all the, the police reports, and I think some documentation from you as well, in terms of your policies and uh, a letter, a letter from you as well. Um, so before we go in, I, I, why don't I give you guys the opportunity to to talk, I mean, I or you can read your letter if you'd like, or whatever, whatever you'd like before we start going through the. Uh, the letter was just for you guys. I mean, we don't deny anything. I mean, we saw it. We have surveillance. We saw the, the incident happen, and, uh, and we had a strict policy in place. And we just had a cashier that didn't follow our policy. And um, you guys saw our policy it was strict. All my help. They they really do a good job. I and mean, we we control group sales. They're all tip certified. Uh, the cashier in question is tip certified. We just didn't do it. And in the letter on our surveillance, we saw 10 minutes later a, a kid that was older than uh, the police's subject try buying cigarettes. And our cashier carded this kid that was older for cigarettes. So his mind just wasn't wasn't there. I, I, I don't know how to explain what happened that night. I mean, we, we fired him right away. He didn't work another shift after that day. Uh, we immediately changed our policy. Uh, you guys saw that. Uh, now we card every single person. No matter what, we every bit of alcohol that goes out of our store, if it's a 90-year-old woman, she gets carded. If she doesn't have a valid ID that's not expired, it doesn't go out. Um, we're just at your mercy and hope you consider that. I mean, we, we really work hard and work a lot. And we do surveillance from home. My surveillance system is tied to my computer at home. You know, we, we check things. Oh. I'll start and then open it up to you guys, but I can't emphasize enough how important and how uh, of a important issue this is to the town. I remember when you guys came in and got the establishment and we spoke to you firsthand because the previous owners had a, a violation as well, um, how important this was. Um, my concern, as I'm sure the rest of the board is, is that you had a violation back in May as well from the ABCC. Same cashier. <clears throat> right, same, I don't know if it was the same cashier or not, yes. but, but same establishment. And, you know, these are just two times when, when they happen to be caught. You know, who knows how many other times when they may have or may not have. So, so clearly there's a problem. Um, and, um, and 
you know, we've got, we do take it seriously. We have to take it seriously. And, um, you know, we've got some guidelines that we can look at to follow, but we'll, we'll discuss what the penalties are tonight. But I, I can't emphasize, you know, the management of the establishment is your responsibility. And if you can't keep your employees from serving minors beer, then you won't have a liquor license in this town. And I understand yeah. that. If I could just say something, I mean, we, we understand the importance of it. And uh, we've done our own, uh, we've sent, I, we have helped to have, like uh, kids that are 20 years old that we've sent in ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had, uh, Tedeschi's Corporate had a program with the bars program, it's called, uh, would, uh, it was a company that would go around and do, uh, they would send a 20 year old in. And we would sting ourselves pretty much trying to, and we never had a violation. And and I understand like obviously the, the, the time that we got caught, you know, it's ignorant to say it's probably the only time, but when I think our problem is gone, I, I, we fired them. I don't think it's my employees. I think it was an employee who's who we got rid of. And also, we do know the importance. Like I wrote in the letter, the end result is the same. We go after minors that steal. You can ask them. We call. We press charges because we don't want that. You know, mm -hmm. we've lost a lot of business by changing our policy, but that's going to stay because uh, we don't want to risk that either. You know, not just for license sake, but for a minor getting it. You know. Plus, it's a law. Yeah, and we all want the same thing. Um. Mr. Danny. <coughs> Gilmet, is that? Okay. I appreciate you coming in and basically being contrite about the whole situation. And, and, and I mean that sincerely because sometimes people come in and they'll say, oh, we'll fight it or we'll try to do something. So obviously to me that, that means an awful lot. And I mean that in all, you know, in, in truth. The difficulty I have, and this is the difficulty I have, is that obviously there's been a violation recently. There was a violation a year ago, and then there was a violation prior to your taking over the store, which I understand was not your responsibility. But from this town's perspective, you know, there seems to be probably maybe the, uh, the scuttlebutt. I know the, 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 the word on the street is you can go to Tedeschi's and get beer. So now it's upon you, and that's what I'm, I remember because I was sitting in this chair when Mr. Um, Vignani said, you know, you're taking over the store. Make sure you're going to be very vigilant and tough on what's going to happen. And unfortunately, it didn't happen. <laughs> and I understand, you know, you can't control the employees. If you tell them, you put them through the training, you, you, you know, you expect them to do it. They fail to do it. They could really actually hurt your business. But you own the business or you manage <coughs> the business. So now you have to take those precautions. I understand you have. So the pro problem that I'm looking at is, is the problem that now your store has been marked. Not just as your store, there have been other stores or other um, uh, retail outlets have done the same. And we've been very hard on them. And they've complied. What I like to see is obviously, you know, you, you've got like almost like a no tolerance policy saying, okay, going forward, this is the way it's going to be. If it means it's going to hurt your business, great. Because you know what? In the long term, it's going to help your business. Because people are going to say, fine, you're respectable. You're making sure this doesn't happen. People go there, kids, teenagers, whatever you want to say, they know that this is not an easy mark. They're not going to go in and do it. But we're still stuck with a problem right now, and, and, and that's where I'm looking at it. And um, I say that because there have been other places that we have actually um, um, put on probation, so to speak, and we certainly have suspended uh, for a day or two or three operation to basically say, I know that hurts financially, this is not the time to do it, but we need to make sure that you understand that going forward. And I know that you're coming in here contrite, saying, you know, we're taking precautions to try to absorb that. But I, I, my position is that, you know, we have to demonstrate that because it's not just fair to the people we've done it before. It's for the next violator. And it may not be you. I hope it won't be. But if there is another violator, we're going to do it to that establishment equally because the problem in this town, as we have, as we have seen in the past, is that this town has a problem with underage drinking. And we cannot condone it. And we can't say to you folks, well, we'll let it go by because guess what? the situation we are the the, um, the, you know, the the liquor providers who give you the license so you know I, I have to tell you I, I mean I'm very happy that you didn't come in here and try to contest it that means an awful lot um, but I think you have to understand that you know my position is yeah you're gonna go for a few days without being able to sell liquor and um, you know that's the way I'm looking at it I have a suggestion but I'll let other board members talk but that's the reason why I think you have to understand that, you know, we need to make sure that any kid in town, any teenager in town isn't going to say we're going to go up to North Situate and get some beer. 
and um, just like any other establishment like we've done in the harbor and elsewhere. So um, again, that's that's my position on it. Mr. Murray? Yeah, thank you. Um, just so you're aware and people watching, you know, there's, there's obviously a two-step process here. Okay, the first step of the process is to find or not find whether a violation occurred. And then we can discuss penalty if a finding is found. Sorry for the verbiage there. As I understand it, you are not denying that the violation occurred and you, in fact, admit that the violation occurred. Is that correct? Yeah, we saw it ourselves. Also. So I would like to then, as only the first part of this process, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to find that a liquor license violation occurred on August 6, 2011 at Tedeschi's Food Mart, 337 Gannett Road, North Sitchell. Mr. Jim, before that, we vote on that. I have no problem with that. I'd just like to say something initially before we vote on that. Sure. Just that's all yeah, right. Because then, then we will discuss penalty. Okay. I'll tell you what, what. Can we get a second on that, and then we'll yep. have further discussion? Okay. Uh, Joe, or well, myself. Second by Mr. Harris. Okay, further discussion. My only comments are: uh, we, we we know that there is no one in situ at selling alcohol who deliberately will put their their license uh, on the line to sell to a minor. It's not that important to, to you to sell a six pack of beer or to any other uh, establishment that we know of. That we, you know, we, we have good people running our, our uh, liquor stores and our package stores. However, having said that, things happen and they are responsibility or the responsibility of whoever happens to, to own that uh, establishment. And that's what wanted, we wanted to say. You know, we, do, we, we realize that no one is out there in the town deliberately selling, selling to minors. That's happened in the past uh, in other towns that we all know about, but it, it, it hasn't happened here in a long time, and we recognize that. So we recognize that it was not a deliberate act on your part, a calculated act on your part. It was something that happened. However, there are consequences, as you know, that come with that. So that's all, Mr. Jim. Thank you. Mr. Harris, do you want to say something before we uh, vote on that? No, I'll wait until after. Okay. That's fine. So we have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor of um, what was the correct wording? Just it was finding a violation. Violation. It was finding of the violation occurred. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? So it's unanimous that um, a violation has occurred in our opinion. If I may continue, <coughs> Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Murray. My thoughts regarding. So now we're going to move into discussion of a penalty, if if any, depending on on the board. I have sort of a clarification question, uh, as sort of a lead up, um, as Mr. Danahy and several other. Uh, Selectman <clears throat> observed there was on May 26, 2010, another violation that was documented to have occurred, and we have a we we came up with some penalty which I forget what we came up with, but more importantly than that, because they would supersede us, the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission ruled that based on the evidence presented to them, that the ABCC found a violation as well, and they suspended the license for three days, of which. Three days will be held in abeyance for a period of two years, provided no further violations um, of Chapter 138 of the Commission regs occur. We are clearly, if I'm doing the math right, within that two-year window. That two-year window would end May 26, 2012. So we are still within that two-year window. So the question I have um, procedurally is, will the ABCC, not us, but will the ABCC automatically suspend this license for three days? That's part one of my question. This is to either Tricia, I guess to Tricia, um, or Kim, but I don't want to put you on the spot necessarily. So question one is, is their three days automatically going to happen? And is that three-day suspension tied to the previous event? And if so, are we allowed then to add a separate suspension due to this violation which they just admitted to or maybe you could answer I'll, I'll give you I'll give you my you prowess I'll give you my I'll give you my prowess okay. okay first and foremost the ABC is independent is uh, independent of what our decision is and in all probability if there's a violation they then it gets tracked to them they will probably then invoke their three-day suspension so that's going to take separate apart if and okay. when it does so, so separate if this is not a concurrent we could if your board wants to run any suspension we have concurrently with theirs or we don't have to I think that was your second question yes but we our decision whatever we make tonight is independent of uh, the ABCC 
Okay, thank you. And I didn't specifically. No, that's all right. No, but I, I just want to take give advantage it. of your legal expertise <coughs> in this, oh, absolutely. In this context. Yeah. So, um, okay, that that's good. Now, along those lines, I will go back to the regular board discussion. But my feeling is is as articulated by D Mr. Danahy earlier. I, I think we need to um, definitely deal with this with some additional suspension, which we should discuss. Yeah, and the only thing I'd add to that, Rick, is that the ABCC would come in with a, vi a penalty for the second offense of just, let's say, it was three days again, and they would add their three days to it. So yeah, would be so it is really truly separate. Right. So the this message I'm hearing is separate. It sounds like there's a three-day suspension coming in from the ABCC regardless of what, plus whatever they're... Okay, regardless. And that's, so this is all tied to the past. And so we can now then are free and clear, if you will, to discuss this the, the reason why I say the ABC is independent because they may or may not, right. if they invoke the three-day, which let's assume they do, which they probably will, it doesn't mean that this violation in and of itself is going to result in a penalty for the ABCC. Because right. this board will probably, the board is going to um, um, come down with a penalty. So they might say, we, we serve them for the penalty that we ended up finding them in violation. You've done it yourself, so why would we need to do a second? Just, just, just as a point of Right. Only if they yeah. appeal. And just as a, put, as a point of information, I don't ever remember the ABC adding to the penalty that we, as a board, handed down. Ever. Yes. Ever. That's correct. Ever. They never did it. Whatever penalty. The only thing the ABC <coughs> might do is if they consider the, the penalty uh, excessive, they may cut it down a day or two, but they'd never add to it. Yeah. They never have added to it, added to it, that's all. Okay, thanks. Okay. Mr. Harris? That's what I was going to ask. If we just decided to do something that was too harsh, they could they can alter it. They have the yeah. ultimate say. They could if appeal they, they could appeal it to the ABCC. And I was just going to make a comment early, I'll just make it now. <clears throat> you guys had bought this business with knowing, you know, there was a violation in the past. It's comes with a lot of risk by taking on this beer and wine license. It's not like you're, you're out of business. You're in the really the, the, the grocery <coughs> food business. And it's you know, a lot of people have come before us wanting either a pouring license or to sell and they think they think it might be a ticket to the lottery to, to you know for this great windfall in it. And as you guys are finding out it's probably not the case. It just comes with a lot of consequences and a lot of headaches. You know, I I just I just had to say that that's really you know it's just you guys have said everything that I don't want to repeat what you've said but that's the only thing I wanted to add I think it's just two other points I want to bring up first of all this is kind of a, a lower key conversation because nothing happened nothing tragic happened um, you know detective Stewart can attest to it over the last 10 years there's been way too many things happening to minors drinking in this town and we all know that minors try and get alcohol before they're legally able to. So, um, you know, we're just very, very fortunate that nothing happened to the person that purchased the alcohol or that would have purchased the alcohol. Um, if we went by our, I mean, back in 2005, we have these guidelines that we put together, um, and that's all they are. They're guidelines. Right now, Mr. Danahy and I are trying to, with the Chief Steward, are trying to come up with a formal policy for this. But just so you can... Uh, understand what it, what these guidelines are. It says a sale to the to a minor without ID. The first offense is a five day um, suspension of your license. The second offense is a thirty day suspension of your license, and the third offense is uh, your license is revoked. So this is your second offense. Um, the ABCC did the first offense by themselves and didn't invo involve the town, which is something that we're, I've talked to the chief about today. You know, somehow we've got to get in the loop of when the ABC does their stings and they find a violation so that the town is, is up to speed on that. So I think we got a letter months after the fact and weren't really you know, tied in as closely to that. Uh, so these are the, the guidelines that we're using now to look at are anywhere from zero to you know, according to this guideline, will be a 30-day suspension of your license. Um, I, I feel pretty confident saying that the third offense, the revoking of the license, <coughs> is probably going to be very heavily considered if this happens again. Um, 
it's uh, you know as as Mr. Stanley said, you know, it's, this is kind of fair warning that if, if this occurs again, there's probably a pretty good chance that you're going to lose your license. Um, you know, now what we have to do is is uh, you know figure out what we feel the the appropriate uh, penalty is for this <coughs> this second offense that you have. Um, and as we've all said, I think we're being pretty sympathetic. We know what the industry is. We know you can't be in the store uh, seven days a week, 24 hours a day to be the person carting them. But somehow you've got to get the right people in place that are doing this because, as Mr. Danahy said, um, you know, your establishment may be the place that teenagers say, if you go on Tuesday night, you can get a six pack. So um, anyways, I know uh, before we, we have any suggestions of the penalty, I think Mr. Murray, did you have something else to no, say? No, I'm all set. You guys have said it. Very so well. does, um, well, why don't we, uh, I can either ask for a motion or we can discuss or I can, actually, I have to ask for a motion. So does anyone have an opinion on what? Uh, in order to get it started, get it started, it has to start somewhere. I uh, move a five-day suspension for the liquor license. I'll second that. For discussion? Yes. Uh, which, any particular dates? Uh, to be determined, I you know I think five days when we could de if, if five days are voted or we could determine the dates afterwards. But unless you want to change it, I believe it needs to be in the motion. Oh, it would okay. Yeah, I just well, we can I'm just all right. Yeah, we, I, yeah, I, I'm with you on discussion. the five days. So I just was uh, we're still in the board discussion only phase yep. of this. Yep. So I just wanted to bring that up. Five days. Uh, be because there's a big difference between Monday to Friday versus say Wednesday to Sunday. It, just yeah, for example. I, I don't have any uh, suggested days. I, I would think they probably want to get it done sooner or later. Uh, <coughs> December 10th or 15th. I mean, that's you know, yeah. five days. I don't know if that's yeah. good or bad. Or Find out which days those are. I was just going to suggest sooner rather than later for the holidays or, yeah. or after yeah. January 1st. Well, I, don't, I don't think, yes. I mean, I'm sorry, are you done? No, yes. Yeah. Uh, um. I, I don't mean to be the hard guy here, but we're not really trying to be convenient for, you know, this is a serious violation. I think five days is not enough, personally. Um, you know, our guidelines say 30. 30 may be a little heavy, but five in my opinion, is a little light. Um, and we can dis discuss, I mean, I, I think that uh, I think that the ABCC is going to tack on those three days at the end of it, and I would, I would hope that they would um, if, we, if we only do a five-day violation. But, um, you know, maybe it's a full week, so we don't want to get, you know, you know, Monday through Thursday or whatever the time period is. I mean, I, I think that that's a, a little... Lean, my, my five days was just to get it yeah. on the table. I hear I mean, we can go. They also don't have to be consecutive days. Good point. That's a good point. Five good point. Saturdays. That's a good point. Um, uh, yeah. I was just going to make a point, but I'm glad you brought it up. I, you know, no matter what it is, the next time, it's going to probably be a lot worse. So I'm glad you mentioned it. You know, so I'll, I'll tell you, here's what I would suggest. I'd say seven days, one for a week, starting immediately. Otherwise, I'd certainly be happy to incline to say, fine, take the next five Saturdays. Say, you know, either one one way or the other. You know, you're going to hit it. It's going to hit you in the pocket. Realize that. But, you know, um, it's got to be it's got to be felt so that, you know, it doesn't happen again. One so or the other. So I'd, I'd so be inclined to say either uh, seven days, one full week, you know, commencing. If you want to do it Monday, I don't care, Sunday to next Sunday to Sun or Saturday. Um, the third, uh, the fourth through the tenth. Um, or the next sa five Saturdays in a row. Yeah. Mr. Murray? I'm still digesting the conversation. Take some X-Lax. I would say. <laughs> All say. right, well, seeing as I just had dinner at McDonald's then, I will, um, uh, I will, um, with sufficient prodding by Mr. Danny, <laughs> which I appreciate, uh, I, I like the five Fridays or five Saturdays or a seven day. I 
am sensitive to um, the fact that you folks are working really, really hard on this, and you're seeing it, and we're seeing it, and I, as Mr. Norton said, this is certainly unintentional, but you know, nonetheless, what I was a little troubled by is the conversation where is this is the same clerk who had the problem earlier, and that's on my mind here. Um, is that correct? It is yeah. correct. Yeah, okay. we, do, we do have the benefit of Bell's decision. I appreciate However, that. They weren't trained, you guys trained, so that doesn't dent anybody. Sure. And we suspended them for three. Well, you guys years. are you guys are nice people. You're trying to do the right yeah. thing. You're trying to help the guy and all that sort of stuff. So I tell you what, before we, you know, so I'm, but just to Paul, yeah. I, I I like, I like Mr. Danny's suggestion of seven right away, which would. I understand Tony, your point about. This is us not wanting to make things necessarily easy, but I would like to get this out of the way before the holidays. So either a, a week starting right away, which would include a full weekend, um, or maybe even Saturday to Saturday. So there's there's two in there, something like that. Um, or five consecutive Saturdays. How about a motion? I'll tell you what, before we oh, make a, a motion, motion in the second, so yeah. Yeah, you know what, I'd like to, can we, at the calendar. how do we retract that motion? Just so, someone, uh, I'll Will retract Drewson. my motion. Who made the second? I did, sorry. John retracted okay, so the second. Before we do that, let's give them an opportunity to talk. Sure. And then we'll, and, and anybody else, and then we'll, we'll go from there and wrap this up. So the mic is yours if you have any. All right, I really don't have anything to add. I mean, I, I see everyone's side. I mean, we don't want to sell the miners and everything like that. And, uh, the, only, the only thing, when I was here applying for our application back in uh, September 2009, there was two stores uh, in, in front of us, in front of you, that had sold for a second time. And they've all served one day. They had a one day suspension with probation behind it. <coughs> so I'm just looking at our, our second offense. And, and you guys, you know, we're here in 30 days, seven days, five days. And that's all I'm comparing to is what, what, we, what I witnessed myself back in September of 2009. The only thing I'd respond to that is is the time period between your two events. And um, I won't be funny. Um, you know, that, that, that had one of the issues, and the establishment was in, I think, one of the ones was, uh, was the market, uh, Village Market. Um, and I think we missed the ball on that one, but, um, but anyways, that's not the tenure of the of the board right now, as you can tell. Um, and I think, regardless, if it goes to the ABCC, you've got three days. You know, if you get lucky and they don't give you anything else, so. I think um, he was confused by the guidelines. Like we never saw them, and you said 2005. Just so we were just kind of. No, I don't. One thing, not wait, 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 yeah. I, I don't know that that's true because I know, as Mr. Danny mentioned a second ago, you came right on the heels of a violation, and we were pretty adamant about what okay. these were. Before, I didn't know if Detective Stewart had anything to say. Not, you don't have to say anything, but is, is there any other feedback uh, before we go through the board and, and finalize this? Or the no, chief? Or okay. Thank you. Rick? Yeah, I just want to answer that point. Is this board has the right to change its policies whenever we wish. And um, there's certainly a feeling in town that we need to do a better job as a board and a better job as a town. The police have been doing a very, very good job with this. We asked them several years ago to institute regular checkups, which they've been doing. And it used to be that a number of establishments received warnings at first. Um, and now of the X number, I forget what it was, over 20 establishments on these uh, blind or anonymous checks that they did, you were the only folks caught. Yeah, so um, the town is stepping it up. So what happened in the past in terms of our, our policies in 2009, uh, whether they apply or not, it's irrelevant because we're moving into a new era where we need to do a better job and we think the board has suggested that. Okay. So that's, so that's why I, I understand. You know, we no, I, know. I completely understand where you're coming from. Kind of going into the unknown. Absolutely right. And, yeah. But in, in the interest of you know, open disclosure and fair commentary, that you guys have been very open and we're being very open as well. Want a motion? Please. Joe. Yes. Ms. Tony. <coughs> in, in terms of setting a date, uh, I believe I'm correct in saying that 
when the um, Mets uh, receive their letter, whatever your vote is tonight, they have uh, within five days to appeal to the ABCC. Okay. So I just would ask that you set your dates um, in accordance. Of their, they shouldn't be receiving their letter, you know, tomorrow or the next day. Maybe, Mr. Chief, that, right? maybe we could ask right now, do you have an intention of appealing this? Uh, I suppose we could. We'll ask him that. We'll ask you that <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. I mean, that would. Uh, well, it, it, let me ask you this, Kim. Even if they do, uh, assume for the sake of argument, with all due respect, there is an appeal. Ultimately, it's going to be handed back down to us. Then we have to reapply. Because I remember that happening in another yeah. situation. Right. So, I mean, I think. I <coughs> I, in, I hear that, and if that happens, it happens, and it depends on whatever comes back down. So, if, you know, they, if, they, if they do, extended, right. um, they don't have to serve until so, yeah, until it's hearing. Yeah. So here's here's my thought. I'd like to propose a motion. Okay, I'll move that the board of selectmen vote to suspend um, the retail wine and malt beverage license held by JBNJ. Foods Inc. doing business as Tedeschi's number 359 at 337 Gannett Road, North Situate for a period of seven days, commencing on December 4th, 2011, and ending um, at the end of business on December 10th, Saturday, December 10th, 2011. December 4th, I believe, is when before five days are up from now. Isn't today the 29th? <laughs> right, so one, two, three. Well, let me, I'll get to that. Just, uh, here's my reason for it. I just wanna make sure I understand. Just, uh, we'll start on the 4th and end on, the, it'll uh, go through the 10th of December. It's a seven day period. Okay. Now if they decide, if there's, if my reason for it is this, if you decide to appeal it, so be it. It doesn't matter what date I pick, but I'm just going to suggest that seven days is better than selecting five days, specific days on a weekend that I think will probably have more hardship than just setting aside for a full week. Just my thought process. Second. So, uh, seven days proposed, second by Mr. Norton. Further discussion? I completely endorse the seven days idea. Um, my only, and I'd be entirely willing to vote yes on this, but I'm just concerned a little bit just logistically. They have five days from receipt of the letter, Kim. So if they get a letter from us tomorrow or the next day. It wouldn't be five days from, from receipt of the letter. Okay, so that's. To appeal to the ABCC. Yeah. But John did remind me of a good point that This only would give them then, in essence, one or two days to decide to appeal. Correct? Because of non business days? Correct. Okay. That's my only. My well, why don't we ask them? Do you, do you need more than more time than that to decide whether you're going to appeal or not? No. Okay. They said they're fine with that. I'll tell you why, and yeah, this yeah, is why. Yeah. You want to appeal it, you can appeal it. You're going to appeal it. Anyway. You're going to appeal okay. it. And makes no difference. My attitude is regardless of that, serve the time. Get it done, get it over with. You're done. Otherwise, this is going to continue to linger, and I presume the next time we come back to see you folks, it'll be five days. It'll be five days that are probably going to be focused on that are going to be hitting various weekends. They're going to be probably important weekends before the Super Bowl, between this or that, between whatever. So my suggestion is get it over before the holidays. The sooner the better. And you're going to get at least three days from the ABCC. But at some top. point in the future. That's Can I ask you a question? Sure. I think I don't know that, but I should, from seeing it around, I think all I have to do is get a whole bunch of, you know, yellow or something that just says and shut the lights off and basically we're not selling. That's you it. Know. Signage. Detective. We'll assist them okay. in coming up with a way to secure well, yeah. that. Yeah. Mr. Again, I don't mean to be a stick in my I'm just kind of curious. Um, if they were to, to decide to appeal this, is our case weakened because we started a um, – suspension a, a temporary suspension before the five-day window is up would that um, when, when would the five-day window start well the, let's they say get they get the letter on Thursday it's five business days Kim so so if they get the letter on Thursday I guess the five days would start on Friday so Friday the second Monday two three four five that would the fifth day would be the Thursday the eighth 
something like that. From the ninth right. to the but I'm, I'm, again, I'm fine. I just, yeah. I'm just trying to get this right because I want to make sure our case is as strong as possible. I, mean, I absolutely I don't endorse think it matters. I don't think it, I I don't think it matters. matters. I just don't see. Yeah. I could I be wrong here, but if and maybe we're beating a dead heart. But if they appeal it, they appeal it, and and this, our, our vote, our suspension, it goes in abeyance till after the. Then it's going to come back down to us. After the. Well, I, I, I understand all that. And, and my point then, is, Rick, then the problem? so my point is this. If it comes back down to us, I'm going to be looking for really good days, days that are going to impact business. As will I. So my point being is, you know, let's get it done and over with seven days. Next week, boom, it's, you know, probably not going to, you know, seven days is a lot of days for business. I understand that. But it's not going to be significant unless it's, if it happens to be the 18th through the 24th of December, I think it's going to be a big hit in your wallet than it will be from the 4th to the 10th. And if it gets appealed, so be it. It's your prerogative. It's your right, and I'm not going to deny you that. But I suspect if it comes back down, I'm going to be looking at it some days. They're going to have some significant impact on their business before July 4th, before Memorial Day, before you know significant holidays where people like to go and buy beer, beer and wine. So I, I know you do. I'm trying to tell him. No, but I, I completely agree with everything you're saying. I just want to make sure we're not doing. I think I think we're. I just want to make sure we're not. You know, I, I think that they're kind of nodding that. That's fine with them, take and let's, they want it done quickly too. So yeah, we can get this behind us. I can't so I completely agree with the strength. So do we have a second, <coughs> for this? Mr. Norton? Second it. I think I seconded okay. it. I think. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Um, the only thing I just want to reiterate is the next offense is, you know, could be. It could, could be. be. I'm not saying it it's will. It's going to be, be it much be. harder, and it's it could gonna, go up to revoking your license. So, please, you know, we'd like to be you guys. You, you guys be the uh, poster child, the you know, the example for the rest of the town. Every time that we do a raid, the ABCC does a raid, whatever. Just make sure you pass. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, detective. Thank you, chief. Okay. We'll move on to back to item number Oops, sorry. four, four. <clears throat> which is the uh, Pledge of a License for the Backyard Burger Bar. How are you? Good. Joni Wilson, A. Claymore Terrace, situate. Hey, Joan. Uh, you are here before us to get um, the license pledge to, I can't remember the establishment, but um, South Coastal Bank. South Coastal Bank. Um, I guess it's good that you heard the hearing there. So um, mm -hmm. if you take it seriously, there will be violations. And um, again, a policy, a formal policy will go out to everybody um, that has a liquor license this year so that uh, everyone's clear in terms of what the penalties are for violations. Um, and that being said, is there any questions from the board in terms of the documentation that we were given? Nope, it all look good to me. Joe, look good to you. It looks good. I just, it's a fairly routine item for uh, places to to pledge their license and security of the bank so it's not unusual at all we've done it we've done this a number of times many, many a times looks good to me mr chair so move that the board of selectmen vote to grant pledge of the common vicular all kinds of alcoholic beverages beverages license number one zero eight six zero 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 five five held by 17 new driftway inc doing businesses backyard burgers Bar, 17 New Driftway, situate Massachusetts to South Coastal Bank, 768 Main Street, Weymouth, Massachusetts. Second by Mr. Murray. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Can I ask you a question, too? Um, I wanted to, to know if I could have um, someone play a guitar with no amp. That was on there as well. That's on. That's that's absolutely. That's 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 oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Well, that, Be patient. Okay, so the liquor license, that's the... Um, the pledge, okay. and now we're going to uh, vote for an entertainment license, possibly. All right. So, uh, the next issue before us is the uh, entertainment license for the establishment. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about? So you're looking for non-amplified guitar music from Tuesday to Friday, from four to nine, and Saturdays and Sundays from noon to ten, mm -hmm. indoors only. Indoor. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on that? Yes. I think this, Kim, this falls in line with what other the other establishments in town that we've given them. Yeah. No discussion? Oh, from anyone? 
I know you want to. Oh, I thought you were just looking that way. Joni, what about the, the neighbors? Have you, do they know this is, I know that the meeting's posted, but have you talked to them? I know they were there. And if they're on board, that's great, you yeah. know? No, I have not talked to the Chasens. Um, I will. Um, but they go, they're down in Florida from January to June. But I'm not going to, it's not going to be it's anything inside, loud. Right. It's yeah, going to okay. be just maybe yeah. like someone strumming a guitar, like jazz or something, you know? Right, good. I don't, I don't want loud music. Um, but if you want me to talk to them, I gladly will. No, that's, that's. Because, uh, you know, na the neighbors, I have to respect the neighbors. Right. You know, I, I guess don't want any, anybody. Right. You know, if, if you bother them, they're going to be in here at our next right. meeting. I know. And I know that. as you've seen in some of the other establishments. So it's, mm -hmm. it's always best to work with them. It, yeah, oh yeah. And absolutely. they're going to be your most frequent customers. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mr. Mayor? In my eyes, the, the, the key thing here is it's indoors and it's not amplified. So I'm totally fine yeah, with Yeah, and this. I have concrete walls, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, if everyone's in any other discussion, Motion. thank you. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an entertain, uh, entertainment license for 17 New Driftway Inc. doing business as Backyard Burger Bar, 17 New Driftway, situate for non amplified guitar music from Tuesday to Friday, 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., and Saturday and Sunday uh, from 12 noon to 10 p.m., indoors only. Second. Second. Uh, just uh, before we vote, is this, this is just for the remainder of this year, right? Okay, so there'll be a renewal coming up. <laughs> okay, great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. And one last question for you. Mm -hmm. When are you opening? Hopefully December 14th. December 14th. Okay. Mark your calendars. I see all the construction going Seven on there. It looks three, like yeah. really cool. there's a lot going on. So good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. See ya. Okay, now moving to item number five which is an emergency sewer tie-in at 27 Captain Pierce Road. Frank, good evening. Frank, Frank. Frank. Frank, how are you? It's Frank. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. How Jennifer, you, you want to come up also? Thank you. Um, this is an emergency sewer connection that's pretty um, textbook from the ones we've been doing over the years. It's got a um, bailed uh, cesspool that's been there forever, uh, bailed the perk test, uh, the systems in the groundwater essentially, um, and uh, we've got some pictures yeah, but of, yeah. of the breakout that, uh, that you can see. Um, the, uh, the tenants of the property obviously have, have talked about the problem in the yard. Uh, we, I asked the engineer to get the pumping records, which I just passed up to you guys. Uh, it was pumped in September and November, and, and both um, pumpers observed in, the, in their reports that, that there was breakout in, in the yard. Um, they have backup into, into the house. It's, um, we look at the water records. They're using about half of what uh, people would use for a two-bedroom house, but they're still having uh, this type of a problem. Um, so it's, it's creating, obviously, a, a pretty hazardous situation. Um, because of the, uh, the soils, which are typical of the neighborhood, most of which is, is sewered, um, you can't put even an innovative system in there. Um, so the only alternative would be a tight tank. Um, and, and from the board, perspective, the, the preferred alternative to that is, is an emergency sewer connection. Um, then uh, the engineer will address more particularly the ideas with respect to how to make that connection, uh, which uh, the, the selectmen have asked us to address as part of this presentation, even though I will confess I don't have a whole lot of expertise in that area. <coughs> Greg? Here. Who are you? Just Greg, if you just say who you identify are. Identify yourself. Yeah. For the record, Gregory Morris, I'm a registered engineer. <coughs> submitted with the application as a copy of the uh, plan that I prepared showing the connection of this property. You'll note that, again, it's a two-bedroom house. The owner of the property is in a retirement, or not a retirement home, a nursing home. It's not for a sale of this property. What we're proposing, the existing system is in the back of the house. We're proposing to use that existing plumbing, um, put in a new E1 grinder pump, which is a standard pump um, used in other places in town. And that pump will pump through a force main out to the street to Captain Pierce Road. 
Out at Captain Pierce Road, there's an existing two and a half inch force main uh, that we believe has sufficient capacity uh, directly along the frontage of this property. Uh, on the left side of this presentation board, you'll see this is the neighborhood, our site right here at the corner of Captain Pierce Road and Hillside Road. All of the properties in yellow are tied into the town sewerage system. The line in green represents that two and a half inch force main. Uh, it currently services the DPW garage building, which is just off this page to the left. Uh, the remainder of the properties here uh, are tied in via spaghetti lines up to Tilden Road or uh, along Rose's Lane. There's a new three inch line that was installed there last year. We understand the board has allowed people to tie into force mains in this area before, uh, in specifically the force main from the school up to this, this manhole at the intersection of Manhill Road and Tilden Road. So that's ultimately the same destination point uh, that we're proposing our connection on. What are the pink ones? The pink ones are um, septic systems that were installed fairly recently where they had alternative treatment systems. Um, on those sites there, uh, the perk tests were greater than 60 minutes an inch. They were extremely tough sites, um, but we were able to get septic systems in. I personally designed one of them. Um, so this neighborhood, I guess what I'm trying to say is, in general, is a real tough neighborhood to work in. If you can't get an alternative system, and I'm familiar with all of the technologies out there, I wasn't able to come up with a design on this site. Um, I would have tried, as I did on the, the pink sites. That's why we're here. A, a quick question. Why aren't they tied in? Why are all those other yellow ones tied in, but uh, not them? It was Rose's could, Lane. Could, could Rose's be Lane. That's Rose's Lane. So yeah. they were just one, yeah. one house over? Rose's Lane goes down off the bottom of the diagram. Right. OK. So they were not included in that loop? No. No, they were not. Correct. Hmm. I, if I may, yes. just a question, and, and you brought it up. You said the owner was in a retirement home or a, nur a, a nursing home. A nursing home. Yes. Is the house occupied now? It is. Right now, uh, it is occupied by three people. Uh, they use that income to supplement the, uh, the, you know, to offset the costs of the nursing home care. Are they it's rented? Yep. It's rented right now. It's rented. And you say it's not for sale. But that's, you know, as we all know, that's a big problem we have sometimes. It will be. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, just one other question, if I may. If I may. I'm just looking, how, how big is the lot? The lot 40, itself, I'm sorry. Four, yeah, 40,000 square feet. An um, acre? Yeah, an acre. The rear third of it or so is wetland area. So you lose, you lose the rear third, rear 10,000 square feet. Um, furthermore, I know. Effectively, you only have about 20,000 square feet to play with uh, in looking at a system. We did three different test pits out there, witnessed by the town board of health. They all failed. Uh, parts. Okay. I just, you know, again, not, you know, this, over the years, this, this has been come up so often that it's, I'm sure, Frank and Jennifer are tired, but you know. Of hearing it, but you know, again, my only concern is, and, and you're telling me it's not for sale, and that's fine. Uh, but for every one we put in that's sold the next week, or for sale sign goes up the next week, someone doesn't get one down the road, and it just isn't right if that's the only reason that we're doing this. And I'm taking your word and the board's word, of course, that uh, that's not the only reason we're doing it. Okay, Mr. Harris, what's well, not right is a new neighborhood that gets built or a brand new house that gets built and gets tied right in. This house is 60, 70 years old. It's one of those brick ranches that we've seen for a long time. <clears throat> These guys did a great job. You guys asked the same questions I asked when I sat in the hearing at the Board of Health. This was the only thing missing. Two months and they've had to have it pumped. There are the pitches there. If Jennifer had any input when DEP, correct me if I'm mistaken, was laying out the priority districts, she probably would have got this area included. And to, to answer Tony's question, those ones in the pink probably would have been included in the whole area. It's nothing but clay, as we found out at town meeting with, with Roses Lane and Consley. 
it is a big lot. I asked the same question of Greg, but it's like a, it'd be like a swimming pool. My only question is, and I don't think I asked it, I don't know if there are stubs in that force main from DPW. So does, does, I'd really like to see this house get tied into that. The last thing I want to see is another spaghetti line. The spaghetti lines that we approved at like two Captain Pierce and right around the intersection, I remember the, approving them, they're pretty close to the sewer main on vinyl. So that, and at the time, there wasn't the force main coming up from the DPW. I just <clears throat> don't want to be putting in more spaghetti lines in public ways. That's all. But I think these guys have answered all the questions. Oh. Mm -hmm. Did you have something, Rick? No, I, Al had it. Okay. Uh, Kevin, did you, or Al? No, I could, I could make it up. Um, we had a couple issues with this. Um, one, uh, the first issue is the street opening permits is closed for ripping up the roadway and paving the roadway and patching the roadway. That was the one issue that we had concern. Also, I met with Mr. Morse. The three-inch line that goes up off Rose's Lane was just put in as a betterment. All those people still paying betterment on that line from Rose's Lane and Concert. And we have had issues with the two-and-a-half-inch line that goes back to the yeah, it's already backed up once, and we said we wouldn't allow another tie-in. So that would require going all the way up to um, in Vinyl Road at the corner, which is about 700 feet to tie into the main line. Um, it's not just a simple connection there, as, as shown from what we talked about prior. Yeah, I'd like to add to what Mr. Kaepernick has to say, and that is that, um, first of all, always glad to have a new sewer customer. Secondly, always glad to have a new sewer customer at a time when we're not going to be tearing up the streets and interfering with snowfall operations and create uh, potential public safety issues. Um, thirdly, always glad to have a new uh, customers for the sewer plant. However, uh, just around the corner, those folks have just paid a $19,000 betterment to um, install a new sewer system that services their neighborhood. Additionally, to completely renovate the street, put in new streets, and thirdly, to do it during the season when that work can be properly done, as opposed to the middle of December, which is realistically when this project would start. Um, I would uh, be glad to have the new sewer customer, be glad to have the new sewer customer uh, install a private line, because once it's connected into someone else's private line, then there's a relationship between the two private line owners that has to be made by the private owners. Or if it's tied into a public line, then there's a relationship that now all of a sudden the town is maintaining a public line. So uh, the pitch we would make would be that other customers have had, uh, along the street, have had to run private lines up, which they maintain, um, rather tying into a quasi-public line, which is one that runs the highway department. And it has been problematic in the past because its, it's purpose is to pump um, truck cleaning truck cleaning material, not sewage. It's designed to be used for hosing down the trucks in the winter from the salt operation to then pump that up the street. So we've had that clog a couple of times. It's a poor design to start with, and we're currently not even considering using it. So the DPW line is problematic for us. The neighborhoods of Budding have all had uh, significant investments made to improve streets as well as to they run privately all the way up to the top of the hill. And thirdly, it's the middle of winter by the time this thing gets started. And we're going to have snowstorms, and this will interfere with snowfall operations. For the neighborhoods as well as the commuters in the area. We would uh, encourage that this project be moved to another time of the year, such as March, when the work can be done effectively. Uh, this is not a new issue, so it's not like it, an emergency popped up weekend or last weekend or the weekend before, but it's been an issue being worked on for quite a while. And it will create an emergency if the work is done in the middle of the winter and we have then the street torn up and we're trying to keep traffic moving with snowfalls. Thank you. Can you just confirm, is this is this a new issue in your opinion? It is to the Board of Health. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it actually this is, we got in front of you probably faster than we ever have. We only heard this two weeks ago. 
But and what, what, the, what the, they told you, though, did they tell you that anything dramatically happened in the last month or so, or is this something they've been dealing with? Go ahead, Greg. If, if I may, this, this arose in August. This house does not have a basement. It's on a slab foundation. So when it backs up, it backs up into living space. Um, so it was the property backed up in August, uh, pumping records uh, September 2nd. We had a pumper come out to pump the property. They observed breakout of the septic system. I was immediately retained in September. I went out on October 7th to do a Title V investigation and inspection. It failed October 7th. October 12th, I lined up PERC tests. So and August was the first time that August there was, was the an incident. So in October, I lined up PERC tests. Immediately after the PERC tests, I filed with the Board of Health. The Board of Health meets once a month. Their meeting was scheduled for November 14th. So I went to that meeting. We're on the next selectman's agenda after. So it, it kind of has been an ongoing issue since August. Um, and the system has backed up since. It backed up again two weeks ago. Uh, and again, it's backing up into living space. So there are, kind, there are kind of three issues that I see here coming out of the talk. One is the eligibility for the project time to town sewer. I hope that we've made a strong case that we're eligible for that. Two is the street opening. I had applied for a street opening permit to try to meet that deadline of November 1st when they shut down the street opening permit. Uh, that permit was, was declined by the DPW because we hadn't had the approval of this meeting yet. Uh, but I would like to know that there are projects in town right now where they are laying pipe out on the streets. We just installed services uh, at the new house at Holman Marina. Uh, water service and sewer service there within the past week. We also have the gas company doing work down on Brook Street at their current plant. It used to be that they shut trench permits down and street opening permits because you couldn't get asphalt past November 15th, all the plants shut down. That's not the case with today's markets that keep the plants open essentially year round or into late December. I'd also point out that the DPW has issued this statement in their October 14th memor memorandum to all drain lamps saying that in a hazardous condition which would endanger life or property, excavation uh, shall not be delayed. Excavations made during this period will be focused with a temporary cold patch until the spring. At that time, um, the cold patch will be removed and repairs made to the roadway. So this client has retained uh, P.F. Spencer uh, to do this project, and he is ready to move on it beginning next week. We don't expect it will take more than a week. We expect that we'll be able to do a full uh, road patch. We expect that the asphalt plants will be open next week. They're open as of this week. We've had uh, very fine weather, so <coughs> that's not the issue. Can I ask um, why a tight tank isn't being recommended for this site? There are a couple reasons why a tight tank would not be recommended for this site. Uh, where, where we would be putting the tight tank is extremely high groundwater conditions, tanks, as watertight as you try to make them, always do leak. So you're going to be getting groundwater into the tight tank, <coughs> you're be, you know, therefore reducing the capacity of the tight tank, number one. Number two, this house is going to generate 220 gallons of water to a day. That's what a two-bedroom house generates. You install a tight tank, you know, at 5,000 gallons capacity or so, these people are going to be paying hundreds of dollars every month to pump that tank out and take it to the town's situate sewage plant. If we can pipe it out to the street to a pipe, it's going to get to the same sewage plant, and it's a much better situation. It saves costs on the home market. It's not impossible, though. It is certainly not impossible. As, uh, so, and titates that exist, for example, in Nantucket, Martha's Vineyard, all over Western Mass, along riverbanks and streams, with high groundwater and are prevalent is just not being recommended here because it would be an additional cost to the homeowner? Not that it's, a, not that it's an additional cost, that it's a, uh, that the town has allowed other properties in the immediate vicinity here to town before. And the town in the past has allowed them. That is correct, as well as within the past several oh, yeah. months. Yeah, no, that's, 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 that's a great point. Okay. Mr. Harrison, then. We told many years ago the Board of Health that <clears throat> if there was no other alternative other than a tight, you know, tight tank 
come to us. You know, we didn't really want any homes on tight tanks. There was one on Constellate before the sewer line was run. And that person, if I'm not mistaken, might have been one of the 27 homes. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, one thing I did fail to mention in your meeting and tonight, but Al brought it up, absolutely should this person not pay, as Joe just whispered to me, not pay the same amount of money <coughs> as any one of those other homes have paid if that's if it does get tied in. And I was unaware that the sewer line that's not that old was having problems. I just wasn't wasn't so aware of that. You're saying they should or should not pay? Absolutely should. Yeah, Absolutely it, should. It, I mean, that's not fair to it, yeah. fair, fair to anyone right. in the district. So it's right around eighteen or twenty thousand dollars, and it's going to increase the value of the house. Can, can I ask you a question? Yeah. This actually goes to DPW. The uh, Carnsley and uh, Rosas Lane um, sewer. Where does it go? Does it actually connect to uh, Captain Pierce and go up? It's, uh, it's a private line. It's, it's now a public line since it was publicly installed as part of the betterment process. Right. And it runs uh, up Carnsley, up Newfield and Rosas Lane, up Carnsley, and all the way up to the top of the hill. To uh, on top, when you say Captain Pierce, up to the top of here, the hill of. Uh, right. Of Tilden and everything. Okay, it goes up and over. So, all right. So my question in, then would be this, um, and I don't know the numbers, but what would the cost be, in other words, from their property, which happens to be the site, if they were to tap into sewer, and they, I would assume they'd have to put in, instead of a two and a half inch pipe, they'd have to have a three inch pipe. Is that what it is, or is it a five inch pipe? Now, I'm, I'm just generally, if we had a if we had a public sewer project going right in front of their home, what would the pipe size be? Well, if we were to install a public sewer on that street, we would have to install a two and a half or three inch pipe. Okay, and what's there now? Just uh, um, nothing really. Just the five inch jetty lines. But don't you have one going down to the DPW shed? A two inch, so it'd have to be upgraded to at least two and a half or a three inch, right? Yeah. The reason why I'm asking that is because. And I don't know what the cost is, but I'm saying if you're suggesting that they need to be able to pay to upgrade the way the other people have, if you were to put a pipe out from the site to the road, and they'd only have to take it up one house, which is the house next to them, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know who, who lives there, but if they came in before us and said, guess what, we want to tie in, then they should be paying the betterment fee of 19 grand or whatever it would be. Obviously, it's going to go through the client who's here, but I'm saying uh, at least that would then make sure that the pipe going up to the connection would be the, the, the size it should be. Um, and it's going to and it's, it's going, not a spaghetti line. It's not a spaghetti line. It's but actual that's line that's going. Piecemeal, it's piecemeal engineering True. public sewage on that street. Okay? And as you pointed out, uh, Sean, or excuse me, Mr. Harris, there was a uh, property owner um, on Carnsley uh, waiting for the solution and uh, put in a tight tank. So the tight tank was the interim solution until a properly designed public system could be put in for Newfield, Rose's Lane, and Carnesley, which resulted in a complete fix in that area. If you notice, if you've driven down that section of Captain Pierce, it's an abominable condition because it's been now dug up numerous times to put in the spaghetti line for the DPW, the spaghetti line uh, for other properties. It's, it's a mess up there right now. So to put one more spaghetti line in or to dig it up one more time is, you know, what's happening is the public is absorbing a lot of the cost of maintaining that poorly maintained street because we keep digging it up for private sewage, which is important. I don't mean to say that denigrate the needs for sewage. We might be better served by saying, okay, that area should be sewered if it's, a, if it's such a disaster, which apparently it is because we've now got three, four, and, you know, the next person will be asking for it. The person next to this house will now be saying, why can't I get sewered? I have the same sewer. Legitimately. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Norton, uh, if, I'm not even sure. I'm, is, is the owner of the property here tonight? It's in the nursing home. Okay. Uh, there's no one here that can that, that can answer the question: Will he be able to? Will, will he agree to pay if this board decides eighteen thousand dollars to tie in? Is there, or is there? You think he would, but with all due respect, I mean, we don't, we don't know, do we? We, we don't. We don't no. have that answer. Mr. Harrison, Mr. I just want to ask a question of Greg. 
it's almost if it's all right with you Tony it's almost a swap off a, a tight tank or some type of private solution is going to be twenty thousand dollars and that's what mm -hmm. he's got a private system mm -hmm. I mean so I, I am I right I mean, is it a fair guess to say it's almost the same it would be, it would be close to that right I mean I just can't I can't vote for this tonight unless and I'll say this to the board unless the homeowner is agreeable to whatever the betterment is, 18,000 or 18. Well, that would be the contingency. Yeah, I just probably just, well, it hasn't been the contingency in the past. Right. We're, 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 you know, and, and that's why I'm just saying, let's put an end to it and, and start doing it right. One second, Jennifer. Mr. Murray? Yeah. Um, I have no idea about any of these costs and how much it costs to do sorts of things. Um, what if we were to approve this but it would have to be maybe not tonight or tonight with contingencies or whatever but just and just I'm not getting wrapped up in the process about that but how much does it cost for them to put in the proper size pipe to get from their property get an easement from their neighbor put a stub in so their neighbor can tie in if he or she wants to if they were to pay a betterment but how much would it cost to get them from their site up to Cairnsley with the proper pipe? Well, I don't know, it looks it's a brand, is, that a huge, it's a, is that a big number? Is it's that a brand like, new, it's a brand new road, you know? No, 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 no just across, across, the the, across the land. No, I know, but you got to tie, tie it in. in. Yeah, you know? but I mean, is that? Is I know that, it makes it almost makes. I know what you're saying, so, but it's a brand new road from gutter to gutter. And I know, think, up, you know, up on. But generally, you don't want to be putting pipes on private property. You'd like to have it in a public way so you can gain access it, access to it whenever you want. We build in a public easement. Or DPW. Why, why would we? One second. Private oh, I'm just trying to think. Is this yeah. trying just, to come to some? I, well, I think what we do is we they, they go pay, they, they pay, they get sewer, the whole area is improved, at no cost to us. You know, I'm going to try and go in order here. I don't know if that's like a five thousand dollars solution. Yeah, or Jennifer and Frank had two hundred thousand dollars to do that. I have no idea if that's even the right scale to put pipe in from their house up to Cairnsley. Would you either one of you? Well, I would. Because of the time frame considering weather for doing work, I would hope the board would consider making a vote tonight, even if it includes contingencies. And if the owner, for some reason, should decide not to accept the contingency, then they won't get a sewer permit. And the work won't happen. Frank, did you have yeah, I, I don't know if we want to debate too much this tank, tight tank thing. I think Mr. Harris mentioned the, the policy has been as long as I've been doing this, which is over a decade now. And, and I think for the Board of Selectmen even more than that, that if a, a homeowner is faced with an emergency situation, the only alternative is a tight tank, the sewage is going to end up in the sewage treatment plant anyway. The tight tank is going to devalue the property. We're going to collect less property taxes because the, the homeowner is going to get an abatement. That that is not the preferred alternative. It's the preferred alternative is to, is to allow the emergency sewer connection. Hopefully, you know, in the long term, we're going to sewer most of the town but that's we ha we are going to deal with these intermediate problems uh, that was, that's a good point well, I'm gonna just, with due respect to mr. Lynch we've had meetings about um, revisiting that whole issue about tight tanks and I, I I question whether it devalues the property I have had a lot of experience with tight tanks in my career and I think it's certainly something that we need to revisit and seriously consider because the spaghetti lines and the redigging up of new roads and sewer infrastructure being <coughs> gerrymandered throughout the town is problems and challenges the DPW sewer department is dealing with every single week because of those decisions made in prior decades and prior years. And it's time, and I think we have in the last few years, been moving in a different direction in terms of the maintenance and decision making around our sewer system. So I want to pose a question to you. Yes. You see what we want. We want to charge them the betterment, and we want them to get the sewer just like everybody else on the right size pipe, not a spaghetti line getting up to the system. So, can you engineer that? Yes. What I what I, what I want to clarify is the pipe that goes from the DPW garage up through the manhole is a two and a half inch pipe. What manhole? The manhole at the and intersection of Tilden Road. Thank you. But we've been told that there's for that pipe. the town is situated for that pipe. Okay. So, so but I, if they're being charged a betterment, Al, let me ask you a question. You said you've had problems with that pipe. 
in terms of backup or what have you. If they were to tie into that properly, to pay a betterment, will that function efficiently? I, I'm not technically capable of answering that question, but I will, will be within a week. Give me a... Well, honestly, I don't know. You know, we've got a spaghetti line, a small pipe, pumping into a big pipe. Well, we're not going to do a spaghetti line. No, we'll, no, I'm, yeah. no, I'm saying, but you come out of the house with a small pipe, you go into a big pipe. You know, you have to have movement through that pipe to get it up to the top of the hill. But what if we didn't do a small, what if they did a three-inch pipe or something going from the house to that? No, it's, it's not the size of that pipe. It's just the, it's the quantity of material going through there and trying to push it up the hill. The force main, where's the force? Is it, is the force main at the bottom at the shed? Yes. Okay. What happens is, another, what he's trying to say is, if the flow's coming in halfway up the hill and the force main's not on, it's going to slide right back down the hill into where it's located, right. which is the shed. So the issue we, you're we saying have, is... We, have con, we, have, we don't design sewer pipes, okay? We, we, have, we are hire PEs to do that. We don't have PEs here. Weston and Sampson, for instance, designed the sewer system for um, Charnsley and Newfield and Rose's Lane. So I, I don't really have to consult with our consulting engineers answer that question. Let's assume that it's possible as a from the get-go, you know. Um, but still that doesn't solve the problem of it's the middle of winter. The issue is resolved, it's the middle of winter and um, who's gonna pay to pave the streets. So I think Well I, I think I my opinion, I don't know the sense of the board, if if they're gonna pay a betterment to do it and it can not disrupt the streets too much, it's just gonna be in front of their home if it's going to work that way, then let's do it. You know, and unfortunately, there's a timeliness to it because we've had 60-degree weather, and eventually it's going to snow, like you said. So, you know, if we could start it next week, then more than likely it'll get done without a huge amount of chaos to the plowing system. So I'm not an engineer. I don't know. When's our next meeting? Uh, next it is next Tuesday, right? Next Tuesday. <laughs> maybe what the, maybe what we should do, Mr. Chairman, is, and I'm I'm not trying to delay anything because, you know, the breakout is gross. That's no doubt about it. So we have a health a health and safety issue that needs to be dealt dealt with. However, if they're pumping it right now, I think they could pump it a little lot later. I would suggest that maybe we we continue this hearing until next week. Uh, in the meantime, if that's enough time for the uh, DPW to take a look with a physical engineer, PE, to say, okay, what could happen? Because I'm not sure whether it's lower gradient where the house is located as opposed to, I think it is. I think it's downhill from the intersection of Carnsley and um, Tilden to kind of figure out if the flow of the pipe has to be a three-inch diameter as opposed to two-and-a-half, then maybe we should do that with a betterment. I will say, though, I know that the issue with the, uh, the roads and the plowing is important. If the road's already been torn up anyways, tearing it up a little bit more with co-patch and everything else, now's the time to do it as opposed to be doing the road. However, I would say maybe there's a bond or something we can enforce to say make sure in the spring. But then again, Pete Spencer's a great, um, you know, um, you know he does, he's a good local guy. He's from the town. His company's great. So I don't know. I, I'd say let's postpone it for one week, get a little bit more information, and have it back again, and then make a decision. And as a follow-up uh, to what John said, that week would hopefully give somebody an opportunity to go to the owner yes. yeah, good point. And, and get something in writing that he is willing to, if the board votes in that direction, which I'm not sure it will, but he'd be willing to pay the, you can get a number from DPW maybe, uh, whatever the betterment is, the same as Rose's Lane will say. I mean, i got to be honest, I am concerned uh, you know, with the town pipe, uh, you know, I'm, I am concerned with the IDPW and who runs our sewer system has problems with the project. You know, I, 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 I won't let you leave here without uh, understanding that. I do have, I listen to them. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. If we, if we vote this tonight, just make it contingent that Al and Kevin are on board and then they won't have to come back. Make it contingent on, you know, the, the betterment of eighteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Make it, if, if, if we approve this tonight, if I'm not mistaken, does it go to DEP and DPW as well? All right. Well, then let's make it. Let's make sure Al and Kevin are on board with this. And if they don't have to come back, it's one less thing they have to do is come back. We know this weather's not going to hold out. And I, I agree with Kevin and, and Al that, you know, we'll be going to, the sooner this gets done, if it's going to get done, or it's going to have to wait until the spring. So if, if we can make it, make it so 
you know, <clears throat> Greg has to get the approval with Al as well, then they won't have to come before us. Add that to the motion. Excuse Mr. Me. Murray, I, I, one yeah. I, I, I like Mr. Harris' Harris. suggestion. So. Could you qualify what that approval is, please? Uh, is that the approval? Me personally? Is, no. that the, is it that the approval of the size of the pipe being adequate, or what? That it can be engineered, I would suspect, my understanding of the suggestion, let me just repeat it to make sure I do mm -hmm. understand it, would be that it could be engineered to the satisfaction of DPW so as to, at a minimum, cause no further impingement on the sewer line coming up from the DPW shed up to Tilden and ideally would improve the situation. One thing I'd be interested in is how much would it cost for them to pay for replacing the pipe from their house all the way up to Tilden? And then also, as Joe right. mentioned, maybe maybe instead to, of a better, have, have them pay have them pay from their house all the way up to Tilden. The I think I, I, I would insist on a better man. Right. They, they can do whatever way they want to do it, but I mean, I I will not vote for this unless it's a better. Right. Yeah, 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 but I'm saying yeah. it might even cost more. I don't would, care if it costs more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to be fair. One yeah. second. I'm with you. Once I think, do you want Jennifer to go? Yeah. I uh, Jennifer. <laughs> We're not going to do. Yeah. Just for your information, yeah. um, any force main that works works with a pump, and if you resize the pipe halfway up, then you're going to have to redo the pump probably down at DPW because you resized the pipe. That's what it takes. That's what it may well, take. Well, if that, if that, yeah, that's, again, not our problem. Excuse yeah. me. Well, I mean, you were just talking about, well, just change the size of the pipe. It isn't that I think he was speaking as just a way to improve the whole system in general. Um, okay, Al, we're, we're kind of throwing some stuff on your plate. Is this something you feel comfortable with? I mean, I think the goal is make it, if we can do it correctly and they will pay for it, then we can do it quickly. That's what the sense, I think the sense of the board is. But I don't want to put too much of a burden on you. We don't want to make them wait an extra three days to come see us if, if you feel comfortable that it can be done with your approval. Yeah, that's what I did. Yeah. You know, I, I, what goes through my head is people who are not within a stone's throw of the sewer line have exactly the same problem and are well. facing the same issue with putting in their own pipe tanks or maintaining their septic system by pumping it more frequently or you know, well there's no doubt that we're going to have more people yeah. coming in with this issue but i mean just by the photos the stuff's backing into their house so this is kind of a unique situation i would guess and obviously the board of health is you don't get that many of right them. wholeheartedly every, saying every time oh, yeah. three or four a year at the most oh no how many times is it pumped twice do we have people coming in asking for emergency sewer connections? No, no, I'm sorry. How often is this pumped? Every two months. Oh, I'm sorry. Every two months. That's what well, was pumped in September and then in November. end of October. How about every month? Uh, I, mean, I had it done a lot. I want to pump it every month, you know, until March, and then we come up with a solution whereby we're not turning up the streets. But Well, that may be, if you come back to us and you don't fi feel that the plan is right. without being, you know, hard note you know if we can make it work let's make it work if not then we'll pump it once a month for three and four months until we get to the spring and figure out how to do it is, that, is everyone all right do you want a motion um, oh, I'm, sorry. I'm not if you're asking a question I'm not completely comfortable with it okay. uh, but I'll let it go no no uh, Spe I mean well I, I think I've spoken enough and I don't want to beat it to death but I I am concerned again with the, with what I mentioned earlier and uh, uh, well we've got two options the, the people have a, a serious issue that the health's coming to us with. So we can either tell them to put a tight tank in, let them put a spaghetti line in, or do it properly. Or pump it frequently. Well, that's, tight that's tank. a tight tank. Uh -oh. No. Just, just, just be yeah. pumping yeah. Well, their system. current system is leaking, right? right? They so, replace it. so they're saying, no, the current system. Forever, right. It's going, but for all due respect, it's going on, Frank, throughout the town forever with some people. I know people, and I can speak very personally, who it went on for years with. And, and Nobody gets sick. I, no, no one did get sick. All right, John, take a stab at it. All right, I'll take a motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant an emergency tie-in for 27 Captain Pierce Road, providing the homeowner agrees to place a pipe approved by the Department of Public Works from the site 
to the town public sewer at the intersection of Carnley, Carnsley and Captain Pierce at a cost no not, less. Not that intersection. Isn't that, that's the intersection where the. Um, no, that's they'll probably go straight out to Captain Pierce. Okay. So we don't have to say the location. All right. Don't say the location. All right. At all. Uh, public uh, sewer at the inter uh, public sewer at the cost, no less than the cost of abandonment, from uh, of the cost of the homeowners of was it Rosa Lane? As that imposed on the folks of Rosa Lane. As opposed on those at uh, Rosa Lane. Kim, do you have, does that make any sense? <laughs> do you got it? Otherwise, did um, you put you know based on the approval of the, the contingencies that approved by the Department of Public Works? Kim, would you mind just reading that back? Well, okay. She hasn't. <laughs> yeah, actually, I did. Uh, yeah, sorry. All right. Vote to grant a tie-in providing, number one, the pipe approved um, is approved by the DPW. No. See, this is where it gets very confusing because John was talking about different intersections. Right. So, no, I, I right. actually can't yeah, read okay. that. So, there's not, there's not going to be any intersection. A pipe that's approved in a system that's approved by the DPW and that the people uh, agree to play the betterment equal to Rose's Lane. Yeah, and you can. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a motion. Someone would have to second it to second. No further. Should we discuss? Second. We'll have some last second discussion. Joe. Uh, one point. I'm going to vote no only because uh, I, I agreed with John's first suggestion of, of getting these questions that we have answered before we vote. Uh, we're not. That's not going to happen. We're going we're gonna to vote on something tonight that, uh, to me, there's just too many questions that, that, that could very well be answered, but they're not being answered tonight, and I think we're in dangerous ground when we start voting on things uh, dependent upon so many things, and, and that's all. all right. Anyone else? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No. No? Four to one. Um, Kim, can you do me a favor and put this on the agenda for next week? So, Al, if you have any concerns on it, at least we're on the agenda for next week and we can address it and make a decision then. Can I just say one? I was going to mention it earlier. No. Of course you did. If, <laughs> Al, if, you know, if it make, you know, possibly run it by Steve at Weston and Sampson, it, you know, that's, I mean, someone who's so familiar with the area, that's. I, I don't, I, I, you'll probably I don't talk know. to him, but present a plan and give it, do the work. Give it to him and tell him what your suggestion is, and he'll put it before Weston and Sampson. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. All right. Moving right along. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll move on to, I, we did number six. We'll move on to number seven, the Situate Boat Works Leasehold Mortgages. So this is basically um, executing documents that we've already talked about for the lease at the New Maritime Center that allow uh, this stuff. Isn't this uh, in terms of financing, getting the uh, documents in line? Yes. Make a motion. We're going to have discussions. Again, we've discussed this in detail in the past, and this is town council just wanted us to uh, look at it again before we voted officially. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to accept and execute four documents entitled Consent, Estoppel, and Agreement of Landlords and Leasehold Mortgage. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving on to number eight, which is a uh, poll petition with National Grid. Is anyone here from National Grid? than we were last Christmas. <coughs> True. Is your name Daniel? No. Uh, my name is Tom Saihaki. I'm Central Designer Station out of Brockton. So tell us what you want to do. Well, uh, the one issue here I have is with the, the poll on Elm Street. I, I did some checking in it today with the, uh, the people that went out and looked at it, and I believe that the grant is not required for that. The poll was moved approximately 18 inches, and I believe it was moved onto private property. It's now a new riser pole into a new development going in there, and there was an easement granted, and I believe that this, the pole in question is now part of that easement, so a grant is not required. Um, 
I can't, I can't. Say that again. In other words, Lincoln, on the one on Country Way, you're saying? No, no, no. El Elm Street. Elm Street. Okay. Should Al be in here? Does he know anything about that? No. <coughs> I think he's already. Yeah, Elm Street looks like all it is is basically you're putting it underground for the whole subdivision, right? Right, and, and the pole in the street, but pole 13 is, is now it's on private pro property. It's on private property. It was covered under the easement, so the grant was not required for that pole. So in other words, we don't really need to vote on that. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. The next number one. Two. Now number. Remember the one on Country Way. That one's a little different. That one's a little different. That is a pole in, in the uh, backyard of 787 Country Way. The property owners want it taken out of there, so they want to move it out to the street. It'll be a stub pole out in the street. I believe you have a sketch that shows the location of it in front of 787 Country Way in Situa. <coughs> now, what is a stub pole? What it is, it's, it's a shorter pole than a main line pole. It's usually on the opposite side of the street, and that takes the place of a guy wire that would normally be in the road, because you, you can't put it in the road, and you put a pole to pole guy and a pole on the opposite side of the road, and that takes the tension off the pole. The main line pole. So it's like a guideline that goes across the way and right. just holds on to it for the thing? All right. Uh, um, I forgot your name. I said Daniel because I was, I was being, uh, Tom, I was, I was being a little tongue-in-cheek like Daniel in the lion's den because I know you're from National Grid and of course we have not had the, the greatest um, uh, response in the past so please don't, you're, you're, you're the messenger here. One of the biggest problems I have is, is and I know you're, the, you're just here hearing it so I'm not getting angry at you, but I'm going crazy going down the street seeing that there's a, a pole that has been cut and sistered to another pole that's a pole that's put in the ground and my understanding is it has to do with national grid not coming and relocating their the, the wires and it's not the other utility companies and what usually happens is that the set area is divided between Verizon and national grid some towns we set some towns they set if it's our set we put the pole on the ground cut off the existing pole and tie it to the, to the new pole change our facilities over, whatever that may be, primary lines, secondary lines, whatever. Notify phone, fire alarm, and, uh, cat feet, cable TV to come over, to new poles in the ground, change the stuff over, cut off that piece of the top, and then we'll come back and take the rest of it away. And until that is done, they just sit there. We've got double poles. And normally what's been happening is the phone company has been just absolutely lack in coming out and changing Okay, over. so it's not National Grid, or, or it's not the electrical, it's the phone company that we I should be venting my anger towards yes sir. okay fair enough you've answered my question that's that's really what I was looking for tonight and um, I, I apologize it's misplaced tonight so no, that's quite all right and 90 percent of the problem that that's what it is it's is. Is, is okay. delay and, and the other utilities getting off the pole. thank you so are you all set with this poll yes I am I'm fine does anyone have any questions regarding the country way poll I have a quick question yes just to Make sure I understand. This is essentially at the request of the homeowner? Right. <coughs> yeah, the, the existing pole is in their backyard and was put in, I think, by Tom Edison, and we don't have any rights to beat it, and they want it out. It's just like a light with a bra on it? Or it, I say no, bra, like something that no, does? No, just, just a standard wood pole. Okay. So is this the new one or the old one? That's the new one. That's the location. Oh, the wire's going to go across the street? To support the one across it's the street. just a cable, isn't it? Just, just a cable? A, it's a single line, yeah. It's a single uh, piece of barrel aluminum right. goes across the street. Just, just a general question. I mentioned it about a year ago. Have you ever seen them tied into trees? Yes, and they try to take them out because it, the tree does die eventually. Oh, and, then, and then you run into problems that and bad ahead. weather, you get a dead tree, the tree comes right. down, the line comes down, and the possibility of the pole basically support that's that. supporting will also come down. Happened to me. I got clothesline right. driving down Stockbridge Still Road because the cable was tied to a dead tree that came over in a windstorm. Did a lot of damage that my insurance company had to pay. I got no way with National Grid. We, right? we used to do that quite a while ago, and, and trying to get away from yes. that. Right. I can bring. It, I can still show you the pole with the wire hanging from it. I went by it tonight after I told John. Did a lot of damage to one of my trucks. But that's that. So, motion. Yes. Please move the board of select and vote to grant pole petition plan 1154072 for a new stub pole on Country Way in accordance with all directives prescribed by town departments. Second. Uh, second by Mr. Harris. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Happy I, holidays. I appreciate the education on sewer lines, too. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome back next Tuesday. <laughs> um, okay, moving on to item number nine. Uh, this was discussed briefly at the last meeting. Um, this is the street banner policy. Um, uh, 
Trisha drafted it and, um, and sent it out to us to review. I didn't read it before last meeting, but I read it before this one. It seems pretty straightforward to me. One thing that, that stuck out is it only pertains to Front Street. Um, <coughs> and um, it's really time periods and uh, fees and size restrictions for it. Um, I don't, does anyone have any questions? Yeah, the the only thing I had was, I know uh, Tricia had seven days, and I was thinking maybe it should be backed out to at least 14 days. You know, some events, you know, you want to have broadcasted in advance. If, if you're away one weekend during the summer, you might not see it. So I, I was thinking instead of a seven-day, um, a banner may not be displayed for more than seven days. Maybe it should be 14 days. Good point. I like that. I like that idea. Yep. Just two things. One is... Um, I have not yet discussed with the DPW who puts it up and takes it down, so um, that's just a question mark. And then the other thing, just to amend slightly what you have, if you're inclined to approve it, is that the exact location and height is to de be determined by the fire department. Yeah, that makes sense. And the chief uh, judge spoke to me about this between our this meeting and the last one, so that would be incorporated as part of it. Okay. Um, one other question is: the, Is the fifty dollar permit cover the cost of having DPW go install it? It'd be close to laborers to go up and get the bucket truck. I'm assuming. I mean, the fees up to you. I mean, my guess is that folks who will be requesting it are nonprofit organizations to begin with. So I didn't want to make it outrageous. Well, why don't we keep it at this and look at again after a year's worth of work? If it's seventy five, then it's seventy five, or. I just have a follow-up question. Yes. Tricia, you said you haven't spoken to DPW yet about so who would be doing it. Uh, do you mean who within DPW, or do you mean whether the town would be doing it or not? It needs to be the town doing it. Right. Right. So you're, 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 you're not changing that. We have a bucket truck. It's just yeah. yet another thing they'll have to maintain. Understood. Understood. But you're not suggesting that the town no, no, not, not do it. No. Great. Location should be I like it. Um, location to be determined by the fire. Yep. Sean, did you have something? Or? Nope. Your motion? Uh, I think John's going to make it in one second. So this would be a policy, Kim. It says rules, but it would be a board policy, so okay. a policy book. I would say uh, move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the Town of Situate Street Banner Program rules as presented by the Town Administrator with the ex um, modification that um, 14 days be approved, as well as the uh, banner location be approved by the Chief of uh, fire the Fire Department. Chief. Fire Chief. Second. Second by Mr. Murray. Further discussion? Ms. Burbank? Um, I'm sure there is. There is. Because, A, we don't have a banner policy, so we don't even know if it works yet. It's so my understanding that there was some in Front Street in the past, but um, I, I, you know, I think it's something we could be open to in the future. I don't even know if there's a location. But. So this will we'll pilot it out for a year. Yeah. See if the pricing is in line. See if it's used and adjusted after a year. Great. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? It's unanimous. Moving on to item number 10, which is the report from the town administrator. Okay. Um, you have my report. Um, just some updates. We received two proposals for the Gate School Feasibility Study on November 17th. I'm meeting with the Public Building Commission tomorrow evening uh, to meet with both the um, bidders and um, they will make a recommendation to me and at that point uh, I negotiate a fee this is fee blind so um, hopefully if things go well um, we'll be able to make a contract award uh, not for your meeting on the second but definitely for your next meeting before you go to the next one um, just a, a couple things. This has been a hot topic um, as of late. There's a group of people that are looking into this. Actually, the town has looked into it for probably probably much Ten. longer than I can remember, yep. but at least at least uh, in detail for the last five years. Um, uh, Trisha has taken the initiative over the last couple of years to um, try and get something done last year in the capital plan, but the funding wasn't there. And this year to get this feasible study to see what the building can be used for. Um, I think that the the selectmen support improvement of a public building. I think I, I feel comfortable saying that for all of us. Um, I think it, it, it really comes at the direction of the school department, though, and the school committee. They, they kind of 
put in their capital plan what they think the needs are. And over the last 10 years, the needs have been a new high school, a new elementary school, a new heating system, new floors. So a lot of stuff does go into the school system. But um, a few things that have popped up that I just want to make mention of is there's been concern about health concerns in the building. Um, I know it's been tested a couple, at least a couple times in the last several or let's say within the last six to eight months, and there have not been issues. I know it's being tested again because of concerns, um, and that we will continue to um, continue to make sure that ensure that it's a safe building. But um, I think we're happy to see people pushing to see what we can do to improve that asset of the town. Um, it's just a long, difficult process, and and really maybe some uh, bigger planning than just a middle school, as we've talked about over the last several years in terms of other buildings being involved in it so um, I'm sure there'll be further discussion on it in the upcoming weeks any I don't know if anyone had anything to add well put okay thank you Trish uh, capital plan they were due on uh, November 18th this is the second year of the new process I implemented last year um, I have over 40 requests for FY 13 plus the <coughs> building capital plan um, and have been spending pretty much all of my time the last week and a half doing that because operating budgets are due <coughs> Friday. Um, there's been a few missing pieces keeping me from completing it. Hopefully I'll get to them by Thursday. Um, I met with the chairman, the, the new chairman of the Capital Planning Committee this year, Jamie Gilmore. Uh, Eric Tenehout did great work the last several years, so um, Jamie is now uh, in the loop on what's happening and um, you'll receive that as well as advisory committee and the capital planning will receive that with the operating budget um, right after the first of the year just actually I think it's December 30th um, legislative changes to health insurance um, I think as we move into the budget season the board uh, will start to get inquiries from folks about the changes that the legislature made last year on health insurance um, allowing the town to implement certain changes in health insurance for employees uh, and retirees if after doing some due diligence um, and meeting with employees and um, public employee groups uh, we are in able to get those through negotiation a uh, number of towns in the area are moving forward on this I believe Pembroke voted last night to um, move forward with um, formally adopting the section of the law that allows the board to invoke any changes if agreement isn't reached with a certain period of time. I've scheduled an insurance advisory committee meeting for um, December 7th or 8th to meet with employees on an informal <coughs> basis um, just to recap um, what the plan is for the town is to meet informally with all the employee unions and affected employees uh, to see if we can negotiate some changes in, in health care design. And should that fail, then I'll be before the board asking them to adopt the section of the new statute that allows us to implement. Right now, uh, I've been working with Jane on the health insurance budget, and as you can imagine, it's very difficult to project what that FY13 number is going to be right now uh, because we don't know if we'll be able to achieve any savings here. So potentially there's significant savings. Um, but again, I just, in, in case folks have questions, and I know there's been questions in the past, uh, we are aware of it and we're working toward, uh, working cooperatively with employees and retirees on, on this option that the legislature's given. Any questions on that? Okay. And the um, <coughs> last thing which the board's aware of and we voted in executive session and now can be made public is um, that the police union in the town have ratified a new four-year contract. The police have been working without a union contract since June 30th of 2009. The contract covers fiscal years FY10 through 13 and follows the patent that's been established for the three other contracts settled on the town side. This settlement is for 0%, a 0%, 2%, and 2%. And um, the new agreement continues to recognize uh, present officers on the force for their education. Um, it substantially changes educational incentives for any new police officers coming in and it won't be a percentage of their salary like the Quinville is now, um, but it will be a flat dollar amount. 
Um, we also, and from the management side, achieved some management rights in terms of streamlining time off. And um, I just want to take a moment to really commend um, the police union in finally coming together and negotiating informally with me, uh, even though we had started the formal path before the Joint Labor Management Committee for uh, a decision that would be out of the hands of both the town and the union. And um, I'm, I'm very proud of the work that, that came out of that and the individuals I work with it. Um, so given that that union contract is now settled and we know what the cost implications are, um, both retro and going forward, is we can move forward on staffing. Uh, there's been, for the last several years, two funded but unfilled police officer positions. The board supported and was approved for two additional police officer positions in the override. And we're also in a position, I, I think, to hire some permanent intermittent officers. So um, on January 11th, there will be a police panel convened to select up to four officers and up to six permanent intermittent police officers. That search panel will consist of the police chief of police of Chelsea, the chief of police of Lowell, the town manager in Milton, who is the former chief of police, Chief Stewart, and myself. And um, you ask about the Chelsea and Lowell police chiefs, and I went to the Kennedy School with them, and that's how I got them on the hook. So. Um, so I expect this to be a similar search to the other searches we've already conducted for sergeant promotion and firefighter, and that it will be very different than I think um, the community or the department seen before. Um, but if you, I'll give you those dates, and you certainly <coughs> to sit in. We have the lists already from civil service, and the police department's in the process of doing background checks of everybody right now. And that is all. Right. Well, I think uh, one other thing is, is in order. <clears throat> Not only does the police department and, and the people involved in the negotiations there, you know, uh, deserve the applause, but so do you. You put so many hours into <coughs> this project. It's been, what, two years, two plus years of work. And the litigations with right. John and all the grievances yes. and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, kudos to you for the hard work and the persistence and, and, and uh, the dedication to getting it right. And uh, I thank you for doing it, and it's a great accomplishment for both sides. So thank you very much. Um, move on to item number 11, other business. Mr. Murray? I have two, two pieces of other business. Uh, it was brought to my attention. I admit I'd noticed it myself, but I didn't put it all together. It was brought to my attention, actually, by Tom here in the audience. There seems to be an increase in graffiti around town. Uh, purple dinosaur at the uh, bridge here by uh, uh, the train, uh, up by Dad's place on Hatherley, uh, one of the buildings up in North Situate behind where the, the um, uh, old train station is. And uh, like I said, I, I noticed some of them, but I hadn't put it together. But collectively, you know, Tom, I think you're right. It seems to have been increasing, and I just mm -hmm wanted to bring that to Trisha's attention and, and see if something could be perhaps done about that. So thank you, Tom. Um, the second thing is, is we just got a piece of paper, and I, I don't anticipate we've all read it yet, but about a potential change to mooring rules and regulations that was discussed by Waterways and meets the approval of Mark Patterson. Yep. And uh, I think I mentioned it once before, um, but it has to deal with, uh, there was a communications error back in 2010 and some people were removed from the mooring waiting list and just again for disclosure this does not if I have a mooring in situate but this does not affect me whatsoever I'm just reporting as a liaison to waterways there are some people that were removed from the mooring list in 2010 and, and they came in and discussed with waterways um, that there were some communications issues with that so there's a one a one time only dealing with those those situations to rectify that but then there's also a potential bylaw change to the mooring rules and regulations which I think we would have to approve at some point so I believe this is going to be on our agenda at some point so just want to draw your attention to it in here these are all very well thought out and discussed and again supported by waterways and supported by Mark Patterson the harbor master Great. thank you Mr. sure um, well, it's the holidays, so I'd like to encourage everybody in TV land to shop situate. And, you know, if you're going to be looking to buy any uh, items for the holidays, for Christmas and for whatnot, 
um, consider shopping here in the town. If you're looking to buy a Christmas tree, you know, consider going to the various uh, vendors who are selling trees here in the town. Um, go to North Situate. There are a lot of uh, businesses that are up there. Um, and, of course, Front Street. Uh, this Friday, they're going to be having, um, first Friday, they're having caroling. Um, it's kind of like a really festive time, and it's kicking off the weekend uh, that should be a fun-filled <coughs> weekend. So, I'd, again, just try to implore everybody to think that and um, enjoy it. It's a, it's a tough time of year because everybody's <coughs> always concerned about the, um, the shopping and getting everything done. But, you know, there's a point in time where you've got to take a step back and just take it in and get, get through it and enjoy it, though, because it's a good time and a fun time, especially with kids. Um, the second item deals with down Cole Parkway, and I guess I was talking to Sean earlier today about it, and I, I have to tell you, I go bananas when I'm driving down on Cole Parkway and I see a ton of docks littered right in front of the Cole Parkway, or the walkway. I just, I, I can't, I'm sitting here going, and, and Tricia, this isn't you, but I'm thinking, you know, is there some way that, you know, Mark Patterson can, like, move these docks and put them somewhere other than putting them directly in front of the view. I mean, it's kind of like building a wall in front of your view. I mean, it's like having a house on a mountain or having your house on the ocean and saying, guess what, I'm not going to put any windows facing that way. And I'm like, it's crazy. I, I know there's a cost factor, but part of me seems to think that, you know, maybe the cost should be to move it in another portion of Cole Parkway, put it somewhere. But I, I just drove by there with my kids on Sunday. And I said, you got to be kidding me. It's just, can we put it over at the Marine Center? Can we put it in some other location? Have we looked into it? I know Mark comes in here every time and says, well, there's a cost, and just lets it go at that. But I'm going to tell you, the next time I see him in here, I'm going to tell him, find another location, because I, I think we really need to. I, you take the best location in the town, one of the best locations in Town Harbor, and you can't see. People go walking there. They smell because of the um, drying off of all the crustaceans. And again, it's just crazy. It baffles me. I mean, we could put it over at the Marine Center, even if it's a small location. Stick it there. You know, there are boats stored there, so who cares? The boats aren't going to care about the docks. They're not going to be looking at the ocean. So, you know, to me, I, I just think that this is something that we need to begin to kind of retrain and refocus. So I'm venting. I'm uh, getting off my soapbox, but um, I just think we need to address it in the future. That's it. Thank you, John. John? Well, I was just, <clears throat> John had spoken to me about it earlier, and it wouldn't be all that difficult if you can find a spot because as the crane's lifting them out, just put them right on a flatbed, deck them. Bingo. You just need crane or forklift at the other end if it's at the transfer station if they can stack them there couldn't agree more with you John and they're there from now till till May so it's you know six months out of the year again it's just a little bit of a cost it must be in yours is it John is it full can I just follow up on that as part of the discussion yeah it's a lot full I yes Rick yeah I agree with John on that um it can't go over to the marine park because there is boat storage there and that's all built into the lease in terms of what they are going to be using and they're and they are full up i agree completely with the sentiment expressed by you and sean some things that we've raised up and i would like to see again considered would be you know sean you said put them on a flatbed truck is there some space down at the transfer station if there is I if there is if there's some other spot there. but i agree it's one of the you know most used spots and because it's winter time, it is people still do park their cars, look out for people go walking, and uh, it's essentially half the year. So I, I, I think kids brought it up the other day. Yeah, uh, the cleaner. So it's yeah. it's definitely. I mean, would make sense. We have discussed it, um, and some of the things are cost, but I think this is something that we should build into budgets if it is cost. Um, that would be waterways enterprise fund budget, certainly related to that. Um, we thought about, for example, putting them down at. Uh, Peggotty Beach parking lot, but of course floats float, and Peggotty Beach parking lot floods, so that would be problematic. Um, but you know, transfer station or or some areas like that, I think it would be great to do. Golf course. I have nothing, Mr. Chairman. Okay, um, I have a couple quick things. <clears throat> I'll start off with the least festive, but uh, Situate Little League registration is Saturday at. Um, 9 to 12 at it's the Marine Center, isn't it? Yeah, the Maritime Center. Maritime Center. Yep. Not at the uh, not at the Knights, it's at the Maritime Center. So from 9 to 12, um, go there and sign up for next season. Um, <clears throat> another quick thing is uh, on Saturday at 10 o'clock, it's my understanding that Santa is going to be coming to town. I, I believe he's going to be hopping a boat and, uh, and coming down to Front Street around 10 o'clock and 
passing on uh, joy and, and holiday favors to everybody. There'll be a party after that at the community center, AKA Pier 44, and there'll be stuff, free stuff for the kids to do and photographs of Santa and all that sort of stuff. So uh, don't miss it. It's usually a great turnout. I think, does a fire truck come down? And <coughs> I, you'd have to ask Santa Typically, that. I, I he know. comes, fire truck picks up Santa, yeah. does a quick <coughs> loop around and uh, I know Santa great. looks forward to it every year, and I talked to him the other day, and he's looking, really looking forward to it this year. Good. Well, it's good to have Santa back. Um, one last thing is uh, uh, Community Christmas. Um, and this is on both ends of Community Christmas. It's a great organization in the town. They do so much good in a short period of time. And if you're watching, A, if you know somebody in need, um, please get in touch with Community Christmas. A lot of times people won't come out and ask for it, but um, this, this is exactly what Community Christmas is here for. Um, they can contact Susan Fippen, and she is the one that's headed up for years, and she does a wonderful job. And B, if you want to help with Community Christmas, they're always looking for volunteers to help um, purchase and wrap and do all sorts of things that, that they do. So in either case, um, you can get in touch with Susan Fippen um, or any other board members on Community Christmas and uh, donate your time and, um, and thoughts. So um, thank you for the attention to that. Anything else? Then we'll move on to correspondence, <coughs> which I don't think there are any. So we'll skip that and go to number 13, which is approval of minutes. Move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the regular session and executive <coughs> session minutes of November 15th, 2011. Second. Second by Mr. Danny. All in favor? Aye. 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 I wasn't here. It's four, nothing. <coughs> and um, now item number 14, we're going to move into executive session to talk about labor, <coughs> labor negotiations. So we will be uh, logging off and we will not be coming back into um, regular session. So thank you all, and we are meeting next Tuesday. Aye. Yes. Yes. Yes.